Be the right club. Be the right club today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most. Expect anything different? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the No Laying Up podcast, the No Laying Up live show, the No Laying Up everything. Master Sunday is in the books. Uh, another one to remember, guys. Uh, great to be with you all. We've got a full house here. We've got TC. TC, greetings. Hi, hello. How are you? Mahalo. Mahalo, my friends. Live from the grounds of Augusta National. Solly, big Solly. How are you? Uh, we have seen the golfer, and he is him. Uh, <laughs> I am. I don't know how I am yet. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're going to work through that together tonight. How's that sound? That sounds great. Looking forward to unpacking it uh, as well with big. Big Randy. Randy, hello. 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 Excited to be here. Hello to all the gentlemen. Excited to uh, to bring it home. Uh, another another big week behind us here. We could not have done it without our friends at high noon. Guys, we're talking Fiesta Pack again. Bring the Fiesta anywhere you go with the all-noon high noon tequila seltzer Fiesta Pack. This variety APAC features two new tequila flavors, Blood Orange and Prickly Ass Pear Randy, alongside two tequila favorites, Grapefruit and Lime. Randy, what do you got tonight? I have a grapefruit. Hell yeah. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a, I had a, a stray strawberry in my fridge. Somebody oh, I love the strawberry. Strawberry. Yeah, yeah, those don't I love the long and fringe, but don't strawberries my first, lime. my first two that I that I pick out every time. They're, Yo, they're fiesta. all good, man. They're all good and they're all made with real tequila and real juice, perfect for any fiesta. Find the High Noon Tequila Seltzer Fiesta Pack nearest you at highnoonspirits.com. High Noon Solly. Sun's up. Uh, uh we are also brought to you by our friends at Titleist, uh, guys, every week, every round on the PGA Tour, the LPGA, all around the world at the game's biggest professional and amateur championships in the game's biggest moments. Uh, it's always going to be Titleist. You, you know, it was always was Titleist. It's always going to be Titleist on Sunday at Augusta. The uh, overwhelming majority of the world's best players put their trust in the number one ball in, in golf. This evening at Augusta National Golf Club, the 88th edition of the Masters Tournament ended with a Pro V1 hitting the bottom of the cup on 18. Didn't even take a four putt this time. Officially earning the 2024 Masters title and a 1-2 finish for Titleist golf ball players. 14 of the 16 events played this season on the PJ Tour have now been won with a Pro V1 or Pro V1X golf ball with 70% of players every week on the PJ Tour teeing up a Titleist. Superior performance, quality, and consistency when it matters most. It's why more players trust Titleist for their success than all other golf balls combined. <laughs> That's a big stat. <laughs> Visit Titleist.com to start the fitting process. Find out which Titleist golf ball is right for your game. Guys, without further ado, let's get to it. TC. As the man who invented Scotty Scheffler, what what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, I'm sorry. It's uh, gosh, guys. I mean, that was I was. I don't think I've ever been more excited going into the back nine of a golf tournament, and that hope and enthusiasm was was so quickly and violently extinguished by the time we got through eleven holes. I mean, it was just clinical, sociopathic, uh, true greatness. The, you know, there's, we're kind of running out of ways to, you know, laud him with praise. I think biggest thing for me is you look back at uh, Bay Hill, won Bay Hill, he won the players, but first guy to ever repeat at the players goes to Houston is just basically like playing there is like a little charity thing. And because the tournament slaps, wasn't focused, finishes like T2 and then comes in here and wins. So he's basically like been leading on the PGA tour for the last you know, 16 rounds that he's put in. It's crazy. Let me, let me get a couple more stats uh, to that effect, Solly, before I get to you. Just to recap, Scotty Scheffler is your Masters champion. He's 27 years old. This is his second major championship, his ninth PGA Tour win, his third win in four starts, as you alluded to, TC. Here's a good one. Uh, since October of 2022, okay? October of 2022. It's been about 77-ish weeks, depending on how I counted. Uh, he's finished outside the top 25 one time. 
77 weeks. That was a T31 in Memphis. Uh, these are a couple really just good bangers from our guy, Justin Ray here. All credit to Justin Ray. Uh, he is the fourth youngest player to win a second Masters behind just Tiger, Jack, and Seve. He joins Tiger as the only player to win at Sawgrass and Augusta in the same season. He joins Tiger as the only player to win at Sawgrass and Augusta multiple times. Jesus. And he's the first player since Horton Smith to win two of his first five Masters starts. Uh, Horton Smith, of course, won two of the first three tournaments. Solly. You were you were out there. I'm sure you watched a bunch of it today. Well, a, any adjectives that we're missing here? Any, or should we just shut the show down now? Well, I came back to Slack. Obviously, just hundreds and hundreds of messages. So the first one I read was, "Man, we got to like come up with ways, like different ways to describe how good Scotty is." 5:45 p.m. What I wrote down in my book is, "Whoa, we got to come up with new ways to describe how good Scotty is." <laughs> like it's 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 outrageous. You, I think in your description there, TC, I think I heard uh, like a new nickname for him, which would be like he's the Hope Extinguisher. Like he he just he, he might just, be Jeff Probst. He's just oh, snuffing whoa. people's snuffing people's flames. You know, it. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I did the Vince at five twenty nine. I just wrote Scotty hits the shot. Like he just hit every time today that it was called for. He hit the shot. He wore everyone down. Morikawa slipped up. Ludwig slipped up. Max slipped up and got a really really unlucky break. And he just was not going to slip up. And even on 13, he's, he's up on the hill in the, in, the, in the second cut, and everyone that's on the bank there, I was standing there just to the right of 13, everyone's saying, he's got to lay this up. He's going to lay it up. He's got a three-shot lead now. Like He's got to lay it up. Or maybe it was only it was two that because Ludwig had just birdied. But uh, he's going to lay it up, and he just knocks it right on the green. So he gets up to 15. I run up to the top of the bleachers. I hear that. He's like, nah, he's got to lay it up. He's got to lay it up. He's winning by so much. Sure enough, just goes, I mean, he hits it in the right bunker, the safe shot. But it's just uh it's it's a prowess that we are gonna have to really work really hard to contextualize because like what the, those numbers you're describing there uh, uh, it seems a little off i know speeth is one i think speeth won two of his first masters uh five master True. starts so i think yeah, it's yeah. probably a little bit off but it uh I, I we don't need to skip straight to this part i just think tonight we need to have at some point tonight we need to have a very serious conversation about the grand slam and that's uh, on the agenda and we're gonna we're gonna get to yeah. that we're gonna get to that there, there's so a lot of what you're talking about there, you know, everybody likes to get really mad about some of the Tiger comps earlier in the year. Everybody liked to get really mad about that. You know what this year felt a lot like to me? Just a bunch of big names up there. All of a sudden, everybody falters except the one guy you don't think is going to fall. It felt a lot like 2019 to me. That's that's what this Masters felt like. And you know who won that one, Randy? <laughs> I do. I do. That's a Tiger one. I do know that. What 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 impressed you most, Randall? Just his ability to hit the shot in the exact moment when he needed to hit the shot. Um, number nine springs to mind. Number 12, I, I think that was probably the last drama of the day. Uh, 14, even just managing to make a, you know, a professional five on 15. It, it just, I, it's really impressive. You know, I I made a big thing early in the week. We're we're done with the eye test. We're we're walking with faith. Um, <laughs> just it, with him, we're not done with the eye test. No, overall. no, just Generally. with him. Right, yeah. he right. surpasses the eye test. Supersedes the eye test. It's brave but of I, you. I I did find myself, and I'm curious. I'll throw this back at you guys. I kind of dig it, man. I, I I dig a guy just coming out here and and dominating and letting it be known like I'm I'm the man. I'm the dude. I'm the dude. I I I want to see some of these other guys start trying to chase right. That they got a clear best player in the world. That now you you know if you want to be better than him, you got to go get him. And I my question to you guys is. Why don't we like this Scotty dominance? Or are we not ready to call it Scotty dominance yet? Because I, listen, I, I was there a couple years ago. Now, right? Yeah, but but second green jacket. I mean, it's here. It's it's you you can't. It's unavoidable at this point. Well, is it? I, I'm measured. I'm trying to be somewhat measured in this moment. I've famously said that Rory's going to go in ten majors. Speed is going to win eight. Well, you know, 2015 time period felt like that was going to last forever, right? Is this different? Like, it feels different right now in this moment. I know we're swept up in it, but I want to say yes because of how sustained the success is 
from event to like from month to month, from year to year, is this this has been happening for like three years now. Like this is not John Rom has done three month bursts where he goes ape shit. Rory has done three month bursts where he goes ape shit. This is this is a long, 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 long sustained is, period. Yeah, of to DJ's point, this unreal. is seventy seven weeks. <laughs> this, this, this is ape shit on a lot of different style of golf courses too, and that's because I think the, the like the one pushback I maybe have is like, all right, let's see him go win a non Masters, right? This is his second sure. major. He's won both of them at Augusta, but you know he's played well in all four majors thus far. Uh, I was gonna say I think what this reminds me of more than 2019 is is 2001 where tiger's up there you know going into the final round has a one-shot lead over phil you got you got chris demarco duvall ells all chasing and tiger just wouldn't wouldn't give anybody like you know he just stays up all day and and strikes at the right times and nobody has any hope and you just like at no point did you think tiger was going to lose that you know and it ends up winning by two the symmetry oh. there, TC, 2001, another Justin Ray nugget. You know, Tiger won his first event of the year at Bay Hill. He won his second at the Players. He won his third at the Masters. That's exactly what Scotty's done this week. And, and I'll give you another one, another Justin Ray stat that uh, he threw out today. Scotty's won three times this year, and he's got zero rounds over par for this year. <laughs> he's got three more wins than rounds on over par. It, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. He feels to me like when you were kind of talking about when you were saying what you were just saying there, Randy, it's like I feel like there's been a bunch of guys almost like trying to take off over the last call it 10 years that haven't reached like exit velocity. And now it feels like Scotty's the first guy that is like broken through the atmosphere. And it's like, no, now he's just he just seems to be cruising now, man. Like he he's the guy that everybody can see orbiting. He's the only guy that was able to actually do it. And solid to your point, like. I kind of mentioned this with Johnson Wagner last night, but Brandel had a good point on uh, live from yesterday where he was talking about, you know, like, I don't think Scotty's going to have some wandering eye on swing thoughts or trying to change things because, like, his swing's already built for all the weird ass shit that he does with his swing. Like, I don't think he's going to try to do anything crazy there. Doesn't seem like he's going to really like hurt, hurt himself in the gym, you know, trying to completely revolutionize his body. You know, I, I don't think really that's going to happen. It doesn't really seem like the fame stuff's going to going to wear him down. He seems like a pretty grounded, normal dude. And to me, it's like the one thing is on anybody. It's like there's fatherhood and there's there's injury, right? Like yeah. you never know when that would when that would pop up. But because yeah. that was the thing coming out was his back. It, yeah, like yeah, that scared some some people off. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like for me, it's just it's how he. It's those birdies on eight, nine, and ten. Like after he stumbled on on seven, after you know he's he kind of hit some squirrely shots there, and just it's he just doesn't go away. And not only does he not go away, he comes ferociously back. I mean, the birdie on nine was just like I don't know how that ball didn't go in the hole. Like that, that should have so been an scary. eagle, right? And yeah. and especially after both guys in the previous group just missed that slope and you know hit it just past that and then he comes into 10 birdies that one and then you know hits the smart shot on 11 and the worst he's making there's boat i think right? the one on nine truly like if you would have asked him beforehand like draw a one inch by one inch square of like where you're trying to land that ball like he, he might have been within like two inches of where he was looking that was yeah. unfreaking believable golf shot and it, that it's was just such a great spot too of like cbs We'll talk CBS later on, but like they did such a good job this week of of capturing that approach shot across the whole field, like just looking up and you get that big expanse of grass and you see how uphill that shot is. And you're and Scotty, every time he hit that shot this week, or three out of the four times he hit that shot this week, like he that was one of the coolest shots he hit all week. Each round was just him hitting like like precise diagnosis of what the proper shot was on nine. It uh, back to what you were talking about, Deej, about projecting the longevity, and and I've I've told this story a couple of times on here, but I'm sure Sunday Masters Pod has a few new listeners. But I I, I really ramped up the Scotty rhetoric after spending some time with him uh, last June, him and Spieth, and like talking to Jordan Spieth about the golf swing, and then talking with with uh, Scotty Scheffler about the golf swing. I was like, oh, okay, all right, this is different. This is really different. Jordan was at the time about as technical as you could have been, and Scotty said something that like haunts my haunts my golf like swing thoughts. He just said like. 
I, all, everything I'm doing in my practice and my training is preparing my body to react athletically in competitive situations. Like, that was the whole thing. It was just like, because I, I asked him what that weird, awkward finish is. He's like, yeah, that's when I know when I get to blah, blah, blah point. I know I'm late, so that's me saving it. Like it, all, all, everything is built to be able to do that in the actual moment. And I, if I probably go back to around that pod of late June, I was like, "Hey, I, I, I want some more Scotty stock because he seems to have come up with the exact way you should tackle professional golf." And I'd love to hear him talk more about that and expand on that. But it, he, that's that, that's the kind of stuff that makes me think he's actually special, right? I've never heard he truly doesn't go through stretches where he hits it way offline. I, I can't recall one single stretch where he started. He does some dumb stuff from time to time, but the way he slides into the shot and uh, his athleticism is uh i don't know he does it differently than everyone else and he does it that much better yeah. like it's it's yeah. uh I, i've said this again like this is the hardest generation to separate yourself from a group of of uh the top level competitors and he's managed to do it to a level we haven't seen since tiger like no one has been this good at separating from a field uh than he has since tiger i think another again speaking of tiger another comp but i think if i'm remembering right i think maybe he's the first favorite to win the masters since 05 is that what it was correct right which is another tiger stat crazy i, I think the way that he plays the par fives reminds me a lot of tiger where it's just like, no, like the way we always talk about par fives is like hypotheticals, right? Where it's like, well, first you like hit it here and then you you get it up there around the green and then you, you get up and down and you make birdie. And like, you got to do that every time. He does that every freaking time, right? Like 15. It's the best he chipper. He it's not fucking fair. But it's like the, the one on eight TC was like, I, I am like having, you know, like a heart murmur going on with like what's going on with Max. And I'm just like, all right, I think he, he might do this. He looks unflappable. This is unbelievable. And it's just like, nope, Scotty's just like, Moving his chess piece from here to there. And like, oh, no, of course he's going to make birdie. Oh, God. Okay. Now he's going to birdie nine. Oh, cool. You birdie 10 just for fun. Oh, awesome. Sweet. He's in the middle of 11th yeah. fairway. Oh, he's safe there. Oh, of course he hit it to 30 feet on 12. You know, it's just like it, it, he just keeps doing it like over and over and over, man. It just well, doesn't stop. It's well, not. And, and it's weird to think about well, how much time and how many majors he may have cost himself like with before switching to this mallet. Right. I mean, he should he he should have won the Masters last year. He led the field in ball striking last year and he lost over four shots on the greens at the Masters last year. And he finished T10 like he should have been in the hunt in that one. He finished T2 at the PGA Championship. Uh, he finished the shot out of the PGA Championship uh, uh, playoff with Matt Fitzpatrick at Brookline. It's it's I mean, he could be sitting on, you know, could have would have should have, but he could be sitting on more than two majors as we're sitting here right now. Man. I can't get over the shot into five. Like that was that was today where those guys, Max Ludwig, all of them, like man, this is like exceptional golf being played. So that shot is so hard, and those guys were just just peppering that flag, peppering that green, and 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 then you know six was tough today, and everybody stood up and you know hit a pretty good shot yeah. in there. I know Ludwig's rolled down to the front, but like he didn't miss his his spot by much. And, you know, and then seven, you get a little bit of a little bit of adversity for some of the guys. And then, you know, eight and nine was just a clinic from everybody. So the, yeah. the thing about that shot for Scotty on five, too, and he talked about it a little bit in Butler cabin afterwards was like number one. So the, the whole thing we've said it eight million times this week is like distance control for Scotty and hitting the right shelves and hitting the right spot, leaving himself the right birdie putts, all that stuff. Number one, he's in the middle of the fairway hits like by his standards, a pretty bad shot. Like that was, I don't know, 15, 20 yards oh. short. It looked yeah, like, right? Like, Spins off the front of the green with like jarring. How bad? Looks like it was. a short iron in his hand. Number two, he goes way freaking long, leaves himself like a stressful one and ends up, you know, making a par. And so, like, when the distance controls off is usually the, the, the sign of like, ooh, maybe something's mm -hmm. up, right? Like, maybe something's a little, a little wobble. And then it's like, now, then he stuffs it on five. And by his account, like in Butler Cabin afterwards, Randy, you were laughing about it. It was like, yeah, it was kind of weird. Like there was a couple holes where I just like wasn't hitting good iron shots, which is like, which is strange. <laughs> it's like how that's the thing. Like if the Masters were five rounds, Scotty would win by nine or ten. Like I, I honestly felt like he was just starting to play his best golf of the week. Yeah, it's very wild. true. Uh, I think the I, other the other thing uh, about the Masters is like, you know, we say this with a lot of players, but just how well it seems to fit his game obviously if you're the best iron player and the best chipper and, and average putter like that's going to play most places it's going to play extremely well 
at the Masters. And as long as we're throwing out big comps, as long as we're throwing out, you know, predictions, things like that. Let me just let me just run this down for the people at home. Most Masters victories. Jack, of course, six. Tiger, of course, five. Arnold, four. Jimmy Demerit, Sam Sneed, Gary Player, Nick Faldo, and Phil with three apiece. Scotty now has two. TC, what's what's the ceiling here at the Masters? I'm not prepared to. I'm not prepared to answer such a question. It's it's. What's the over under? What do you think? Three and a half. Green jackets. I think probably. four is probably the over under. I mean, he's already halfway there, right? You know, I think if I think if he gets yeah. to if he gets to five, that that feels surprising. If he gets to four, that almost feels expected at this point. It's insane. That's kind of what I'm getting at is like yeah. five. Five doesn't feel like outside the realm of possibility. That's so freaking many but it's like as long as we're throwing out like the tiger comps is like do i think he's getting to 15 majors no but like could he get to five masters it's kind of like i don't know how valhalla especially like since they've redone it but all man, of them are gonna about fit. pinehurst like but like pinehurst you want to talk about a course that yeah seems to fit like better than most board. u.s open like yeah like basically run back the same tournament that we just yeah. had you know and true true right up there as well it's freaky shit man hey so uh, obviously not gonna get 15 majors we're not gonna fall for that but could be the most of this generation very like very obviously right i mean he's yeah. he you know how many still, is he has, gonna win? still has three more to catch brooks right yeah it, that's it's brooks, brooks could playing. pick off and you know a few more and yeah. and he's not playing against plumbers and firemen here either right although no, some of them played like it today it's high, highly tactical first responders he's he's played against <laughs> So uh, this is Brooks has played in 39 majors. Uh, Scotty has played in 18. So he's played in about half as many. And Brooks had played three, six. He had played 15, 16, his 17th major before he won his first major. Uh, and then they started coming really quickly after that. And so, I yeah. Sorry, I was just going to interject and say I'm like today makes me so eager for the rest of major season because. A lot of those guys, the the majors kind of come in bunches, right? And and I think that's what we're talking about. How how many can Scotty get this year, next year? You know, like well, next three years, how many is he getting? Because if he can pick off another, I mean, two, like it, it could happen. It could happen quickly. Oh my god! I I know I'm TC. I'm with you. I'm not ready to have that like grand slam talk, but it just feels like man, he could win two a year for the next couple of years, and and then. All of a sudden, he's at six. So, so I, let, let's do it. I want, I want to hear a passionate case for the Grand Slam. I, I, I could passionately say I think he wins three majors this year. Like I, I really, I really think he's going to. At sitting right here, which, right now. Which one do you think he doesn't win? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those listening in your car, there's a, a very funny photo of Neil Shipley that's uh, the flash on the screen, looking at God, me mine, suspiciously. My guy Neil looks. Spooked. <laughs> I think he's still spooked after the after the whole tiger. Uh, well, yeah, whatever tiger passing in the though. note thing and yeah. the, the green jackets looking at him like he had <laughs> six heads. Uh, I, I mean, I the British Open would be the one that's the biggest question mark, right? We haven't seen him have the most success there, uh, and also but, because a lot of it's out of his hands with weather. Totally. Yeah, that's just there's a little bit more, and yeah. There'd be a lot of attention on that one if he went, especially if he wins one more. Oh. I, I really do think he could be the oh. first to win three since the cat in a year. And uh, I mean, he's going to, what's he going to be for the PGA? Like three to one? He was four to one this week. Like he's not going to be that high, will he? I know it's a bigger field. I don't know. Maybe potentially he would be just with the bigger field and, and, uh, and whatnot. But dude, it's Gooch is back, maybe. It doesn't feel reckless. Like, what do you, what would you put the odds? It's probably 75 to one that he wins a grand slam. It was probably 100 to one coming into this week, I think. What's uh, the over under right now? Two and a half for this year. For this, this year? year? It'd still yeah. be, you'd still uh, be like one and a half, right? You'd get like, plus odds. Yeah. yeah. You'd get plus odds big time on two and a half. But uh, even, yeah. God. I, I, it's exciting. It's, it's, Dude, this is exciting. I know. That's what I'm, I'm saying. excited. So that's yeah. what I was going back yeah. to is like, that's like, you want to talk about 180. I'm here. Like, this is now, hey, give me some historical shit to care about. I'm I'm all in. Can I say one, one of the biggest takeaways I had from being there in person, you get a really good litmus test as to who the popular players are by the reaction when their score goes up on the board. 
And he, that's why I think the hope extinguisher should be his name because there were groans down an amen corner when he went on the run at eight, nine, 10, it was like, it was kind of like, Oh, like our reactions of, Oh shit. What have we done here? Like Oppenheimer shit of, of, <laughs> of what, we, what, what, what do we have on our hands here? This is a problem. Uh, Max, Max had the crowd today. Max, the, the crowd was pulling for him. And I think every time that there was like a, a birdie that went up for, for Scotty, it wasn't like a boo. It was just like a, Oh, we might be do We might be getting a really dull finish here because the hope extinguishers here. What about Ludwig? I was going to say, we're, we're going to get to Max in a minute. We got, we got to talk Ludwig. I, I do. Yeah. Let's start there. What was the, what was the reaction? I, I'm probably, I mean, pretty neutral. I'd say. I mean, people were excited when he, uh, you know, he he went on the uh, the run there to end the front nine, and I, I was there down on eleven when he hit that ball. I mean, when, as soon as it got up in the, as soon as it got, was halfway to the hole, like the whole crowd was just yelling like, "That's wet! That's wet! That's wet!" And just it, it did. I don't know if it looked like a massive mistake on TV, but I watched a ton of shots come into eleven today. And, uh, you know, it was him and Colin that, that were the ones that messed it up. And I know you got to press the button at some point and make a move. I just don't think that was the spot. I don't know if he was trying to. Uh, you know, the wind was kind of pulling it in that part. And it really does swirl and is very, very tough to read what it's actually doing down there. But that was just a massive, uh, massive mistake. But the takeaway is not that's the last that's not gonna be the last thing I remember about Ludwig this week. I mean, that was yeah, like, just oh, shit, he's also here. Yeah, he just hit the, I mean, he just hit a bad shot. Like, I don't think he was trying to go anywhere near that pin. He's, if you look at it, he's, he's lined up well, right. And he's just, just, you know, pulled one straight left. Very uncharacteristic for him. Um, you know, was hitting his driver, just absolutely punishing it. I mean, it was <laughs> crazy. Uh, drive on nine. I mean, shit, clean card on the front nine being crazy nervous. Like he was saying he was, he was super nervous on, on, um, one T Comes out, birdies two. Uh, I don't know what he did on three because they didn't fucking show it on the <laughs> on the uh I mean Sally, like they they totally lost the plot early really? on CBS. It was oh, my heart. It was really bad. And and they kept they kept showing like it would they would cut to big tone or they would cut to yeah, a lot of like the, ceremonial tap ins on 18 yeah, or just, just like or like Adam's, lingering on Adam Scott finishing. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. was a lot of past champions was yeah. a, and big tone for some reason which i totally i'm sure he's won here before totally <laughs> part three yeah but but i think i don't know i was a little bit bummed when i saw him come out in that shirt because the shirt was weird and kind of unbecoming like just let him wear black just let him wear black navy and white like that's what love big it's all he needs to wear um but man like he just he made that putt on uh on what was that comebacker on six yeah yeah, that was like that was huge. Uh, shot the, on nine. Yeah, the shot on nine was gross. Uh, the the shot on on uh, on seven, like the birdie on seven, which I think they need to shave down that little bank there in front. That's one of my favorite pins on the whole course. But seeing Collins' ball come to rest there, right below the pin, like that thing should have been all the way back in the fairway there. Um, but yeah, and then Ludwig, obviously, you know, eleven. He hits a proper shot into 10, 11 struggles, and then really great two putt on 12. Birdies 13 and 14. And, you know, 15 kind of had his number this week. He needed yeah. to needed to run that in on 15. He he improved over, like he hit a good wedge in there that was super close to being tap in. It just got held up in that in that back fringe just a tad. And then, you know, and then he's forcing it from there. And the I eye test here, just real quick, Deej, the eye test and the data supports this. TC, it just, whenever something goes wrong for Scotty, which is extremely rare, he's also the best chipper. It's insane. And it's Hoygaard and for Ludwig, like when it, when they really needed the precision and Magusta is just the emphasis on that stuff is just tighter. And with that level of firmness, like the shots into 15 and, and things like that, just needed that level of precision. Scotty was first in strokes gained around the greens. Ludwig was 51st. Ludwig yeah. was first in putting. He had an unbelievable putting week, fifth off the tee, 13th in approach. It just was like, yeah, the difference was when you needed that little feely shot, it just has to be clipped so perfectly, and there's no margin for error out there, and that's that was the four-shot difference between him and yeah. Scotty. And I think, you know, going back to what, like, he struggled, that double that he made on seven, I think, on, on Thursday, um, bogey on 14, like, just a couple of – uh, a couple of bad, or just, sorry, double on fifteen, the bogey on fourteen, just like 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 for me, I feel like the experience is already adding up for him 
you know, even playing four rounds there now. Like, all right, cool. He's not going to make that same mistake on 15 or he's not going to leave it short on 14, come up short of that green. Like, I think he's a quick learner, it seems like. And I'm just glad people got exposed to like what what he's about because he's a fucking predator, man. Like, and let me let me give you a little Vern moment here, TC. Just to, let's let's reminisce a little bit because a couple years ago, we're sitting here in my beloved state of Wisconsin. We're sitting in the RV. This this Ludwig guy is in Texas Tech. TC's making these bold proclamations. It's now what two and a half years later. He's going to be what the sixth or seventh ranked player in the world. He's the runner up at the Masters. He's a Ryder Cup hero. Well, are, where are we at? I mean, is this, uh, have, did you ever make it this far in your dreams? How, how I did. Are, how are I you? Did. He, he right wins. Now? Are like, we ahead of schedule? Are we? My guy got schedule? to play with him in Sweden. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, I think we're right on schedule. Yes, of course. This thing started as a bit, but truly, like, once I kind of dug in, I was like, oh, no, like, this guy's like, oh, sick. I know. Real that. deal. Right. Like, he, like, when he won at the prestige out in, out in the desert, like, and the wind was blowing 40. Like, no, like, he's a real player. He's a, I mean, shit. Like, Randy, you were saying it earlier. Like, but, Butch Harmon, Sophie Walker, you know, tweeted yeah. that. Like, Butch is, Butch is over the moon about the guys. Our, our friend Sophie Walker, I, I didn't watch it, but Butch was on BBC this week, and Sophie said, Butch is so excited about Ludwig, and he has seen them all over the years. And I thought that was just a really cool little nugget there. I mean, some of his little, like, facial expressions after after oh, putts today were awesome so when he when he dropped the power bar or whatever yeah. the bar was after nine. Like, the dude has it, man. He's got poise. He's kind of like, like, I think if you're looking at, at someone I'm really rooting for, because you know, Scott, Scotty's boring, right? Greatness, like greatness isn't boring, but Scott, Scotty's boring. And Scotty would probably be the first one to tell you that. Right. Um, and, and I think Ludwig seems like he's got kind of that joie de vivre that, that, you know, swagger and he plays so freaking fast too, which I love. Like he is up there getting into the shot and hitting it. And man, I'm, I'm excited to see what he and Joe do over the next, next five years. Somebody it's, here told me this week, they said somebody at some point you have to give TC shit for for all the claiming inventing invented Ludwig, he was the number one amateur in the world when when this whole thing started. He was number real bold out on a limb, uh, being the number one amateur in the world. Yeah, that's, but that's like not my Kita words. Nakajima, like there's there's other like, also your there's boy. A, there's a lot <laughs> of like number one amateurs in the world out there. Takumi Kanaya, I think that was your boy. I, again, I, I, I don't think most people have heard me ride the for them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just gonna say real quick. Sorry. I, one one of the most fun things. I think in any sport, and it certainly held true with Ludwig this week and today especially, is just seeing a young person, right, that, that just feels and looks at ease in, in a big moment. And it's so impressive because it's so foreign. I think to me and probably everybody watching, like I can't imagine being, looking, acting that cool in, in such a moment. And when you when you get to see that in real time for the first time it's it's very special and i i think that's my biggest takeaway with ludwig is just like damn tc like you were saying he's just he's just yeah, cool dude. i loved his attitude and it, it's really fun to see that and look, you don't need uh, you know some of the takeaways i have from being on site are similar to takeaways i have from watching on tv like you don't need somebody on site to be like you don't understand how big this fucking tournament is and how big of a deal it all is but you do feel it when you're there and like i when though when the uh second to last group when their group was teeing off on 16 the one thing i wrote down in in my in my notebook was like i'm nervous like i was <laughs> legitimately like my heart was fluttering standing on top of like the tournament was almost decided at that point but there was just so much angst uh, in general around that whole bottom area of the property and everything and like all the people stacked down there the stillness of the of the water and the way the sun was coming down like if that's like Ludwig's debut he gets to experience that in his debut in his debut has that experience played that well I mean he played so fucking good this week it's it it uh, not to not to say I needed convinced on him, but it was like, dude, now you just go into a different category like you know not the kind of wait and see it's like no now's the time I mean he's gonna be what one of the five lowest favorites for the PGA? I mean, what have to be at this point. Solly, it and he's I think yeah. there's some low hanging fruit there for him to improve upon. Like you said, with the chipping, he's already improved upon it since Beth or since uh Marco Simone. I think he's like he's he's been hard at work on his chipping, the putting's improving. Seems like I think the wedge I think too. I think the wedge dispersion's improving, like he's and just situational awareness is only gonna improve. Like he's he's a fucking quick learner and Man, like he's gonna he's gonna win one of the next 
four or five majors. And I think like, you know, not to say that I would be one of the people who like saw this coming, but like, I think it's a little easier to see coming when you see that, like the foundation of the house is built on hitting it three thirty and straight off. Every oh, you know what I mean? Where it's like, dude, if you, oh, well, if you got that, like shit, man, like the, <laughs> The other stuff doesn't even need to be like an easy game. Well, it doesn't even need to be like that, like crazy good. It's like, yeah, Brian Harmon's got to hit his irons really freaking good like that, that he really needs to, if he's going to contend, it's like, man, if you're, you're already like that far down there and every hole is just, it's a different game. But guys, I'm appalled that, that I'm being accused of front running world amateur (laughs) golf ranking. Number ones. It's the most fraudulent ranking in the world. (laughs) Ten times worse than OWGR. I put no stock in it whatsoever. We will. Uh, we will. Uh, that's gonna be a whole separate podcast. I think <laughs> we got to we got to spin that up and do it's behind series, the paywall. Eight, eight part series. Uh, all right, let's talk about the pro, should we? Uh, Max seventy three seventy three on the weekend. His first big, 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 big taste of major championship contention. Uh, Randy, we'll start with you. What what kind of grade would you? What, what grade are you giving Max this week? Uh, overall, I give him an A minus. I, I think a lot of that has to do with it. Listen, this was his first time really being in contention at a major championship. And, and that's a big deal. That's a big thing for him. Uh, he'll learn a lot. He'll, you know, everything, everything that goes with it and everything that'll take away from it. I think TC, I, I don't want to step on your toes and, and I'll yield to you because I, I, I thought your comments last night on the show were prescient. In, in that you know you, you were concerned that he was he was playing it a little too conservative and, and he just wouldn't be able to kind of shift into six gear top gear when he needed to and I, I thought we saw that today I you know there's no way to sugarcoat today disappointment overall um, obviously 12 was was the really bad hole I, I don't know how much of a bad break that was you know it, it hit on the down slope in the back of the green maybe a yard or two shorter and it's it, it, it's maybe just a bogey or maybe he's able to save par um but very disappointing then to see him go to 13 and and hit three wood and lay up and and again not be able to stuff that wedge close uh walks off 13 with with a par i just felt like you know he 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 wasn't able to get to that to that top gear. And I, I don't know, you know, I, I take a little solace in that looking where Scotty ended up like Max was never going to get to 11 under. I don't think like there was, there was no 66 out there for him today. Um, but I would have liked to have seen him push the issue a little bit, you know, like, Hey, we're either going to win this thing or we might finish down at like, you know, T 12 or something. Um, so I don't know, but I, I don't I, I don't think today totally wipes out the full week. Like I said, first time being in contention, it, it's a big step for him. He he had not had that in his career, and so you know, hopefully he can take this and run with it and and have a great rest of the major season this year. TC, yeah, I think yesterday. I mean, first of all, hats off to Max. Like, hopefully this is part of the process, right? It's it's like you said, Randy, first time contending in a major. He's got the game. He can do it. I feel like he, the conditions, they definitely softened the golf course, softened the green, slowed him down a little bit. I think yesterday it felt like he was trying to win a U.S. Open yeah, a little bit, playing like he's trying to win a U.S. Open. And, and today, you know, it, I, yeah, just, just how tough it is to, or how tough it must be to, to flip that switch from conservative kind of ball control, you know, hey, let's, let's win the turnover battle here to, hey, we got to go get some birdies. Um, but even then, like, I think he, he played gosh, like birdie putts on one, three, like he had some pretty stress-free stuff. The first, first few holes there, when he hit it close on six, that was the one I was thinking, man, like if, if he makes this putt, it's on like Donkey Kong misses that putt. And then he hits just that crazy hot Carl left ball on 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 seven and it was like whoa like where did that come from it was like what neil calls the chloroform ball and then comes back birdies eight and then i think nine was disappointing to like not not get that one close because yeah. he could have been right there with scotty like two yards yeah you know like birdie and eight nine and ten plays it smart on 11 like that was great great work between max and joe there they cbs tried to tried to talk over it at one point and and uh you know they they certainly took their time but that was that was the spot to take your time right that was the spot to to 
and he hit a great shot into the corner of that green. And then, yeah, I think 12, that shit feels, yeah, he missed his spot by maybe a couple of yards, but also very rub of the greeny. Like he hit on the fucking fringe <laughs> and it was like, it hit like a, like a, like a freaking tennis court and just bounced off. But I think, uh, you know, similar to like, like, like yesterday, again, I don't know if he was between clubs or like, I'm keen to talk to him about it, but I think like on 13, like it, it, you gotta, you know, you gotta hit the driver there. You gotta force the issue. Like you gotta push, you gotta push your chips in at some point. And, you know, to have 290 in on the second shot when you need to go make Eagle uh, just doesn't, I don't know. That just yeah. didn't, that, that didn't feel very dog-like to me, it, I guess. That's exactly right. That's just was like, wait a second. What, you, you're, you're saying all this on one hand, but it, the, the actions aren't quite matching. That was the biggest moment of disappointment. And they've got a plan. I get it. Like, all right, you want to stick to your plan or whatever, but you know what, man? Like sometimes plans need to change. Yeah. You got to throw the plan out the window. I so go like back to just real quick on the Twitter spaces we did on Tuesday. He gave an example of like the swing feel that he had for this week. I hope I'm remembering it right. The swing feel he had for this week was bad for uh, like hitting a ball above your feet, like from that fairway. Like that was that was like coming in was just like almost like a no go um, from that new tee in, into that green. That was because he hit one in the water in a practice round, and it was going to need to be. I forget what it was. Needed to be. They they hit five iron. It needed to be four, and with four, it would have been the wrong shot exactly. But I, I'm wondering if that if he overreacted to that kind of situation and, and and came up with that plan. But that was that was something he was talking about with Joe of like, all right, we for here's what we have for this week. Here's how we're going to play this hole. Um, I don't don't know if it should have lasted four days, but that's that's what they came up with. Well, yeah. and it just puts into you know clear comparison. Like yo, Scotty's <laughs> listen, dog. Scotty's got that shot. Like. It, it, if that's where Ludwig you want to go, that like, too, right? we, you know? we got to figure that shit out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I mean, that shit, I thought Ludwig's was going to get to eight feet. Yeah. It was <laughs> such good a good shot. Oh, it was that's such a good I, shot. I was kind of saying yesterday is like, it was going to be so fun today to watch the, the, like it's, it's different levels of your career. Max has been a pro for a very long time and still is kind of in this spot for the first time. Ludwig's been a pro for a very short amount of time and is still in that spot for the first time and watching their decision-making was going to be really interesting today and 13 was probably the best example of that right because I, i'm sure that max and joe are trying really hard to like stick to the game plan like what you guys are saying and I, I, the most reactionary thing would be okay shit now we got to change the game plan and then oh god now we hit it in the water and now we're changing the game plan even more and then it just turns from a you know t3 yeah. to a to a t15 and then the monkey stays on the back and what like that whole thing is just very interesting i agree with you guys it seems like you have to hit driver in that spot but it, it becomes a really interesting kind of you know just situation and i guess i would just i would i would also point to the fact and this gets brought up a lot around the masters and around scotty but like the guy that we just spent the first 30 minutes about you know talking about how bulletproof he is woke up two years ago at this tournament and was like crying because he was so stressed out and so anxious about going out and trying to win this and answer the bell and was the moment going to be too big and yada 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 so like for a guy like scotty like that he hasn't always been like that like it takes it takes a yeah. while man and so like it's a lot to ask for for max to you know come out today and say i've never done this before but i'm going to nail it on the first try would have been unrealistic did he dupe me into thinking that he was absolutely going to do that yes full full throated yes he did i was like watching where he's hitting just how he looked on one he's yucking it up with scavi and how that shot he hit in a five the shot he hit in a six i was like fuck, this guy's not nervous at all man he's gonna fucking do it and uh you know 18 holes for a reason i guess it's a, it's a long day i don't think it was nerves that got him though is the thing man i, I think he's probably gonna look back probably pretty proud with how he competed into the weekend and and what he was able to accomplish i mean it uh it, I, I ran to Lacey. I ran into Kipper, his agent, you know, before they went off. And I was like, all right, how's our, how's our boy doing? And they were like, they were, I was nervous as shit. I could not contain my nerves. And they were both like, he's fine. He's doing great. He's really excited. And he, it felt like he played excited. It didn't feel like he played overly timid or scared or, or you know, he kept so talking about in his interviews about being, instead of like having doubt creep in on what you can't do, like reminding yourself of what you can do. And like, that feels very real to me. Like there's no, not a coincidence that, this is his best major championship finish by far, best performance in a major by far in terms of actually being in contention with like how he's talked about his mental approach over the last weeks, months. So I, I didn't went with him at the players and there was just like a, 
a different dude in terms of, uh, you know, his understanding of how his body was reacting in competition and all those things. So I'm super proud of the dude. I know he's very, probably a little bitter, you know, a little stinging tonight, but at the very, at the, you know, same time he finished T3 behind two, like dynamic, dynamic golfers, uh, in the biggest stage in golf. And, uh, he, he acquitted himself quite well. I mean, so he, shot, you have, he shot 73. If he shoots 67, he still loses by one to Scotty. Right. And and, right. and like while while he's making that decision on 13, Scotty's still Scotty's standing on the tee on 12. And you don't know what Scotty's gonna do. Like, you know, Scotty, of course, hits the perfect shot, you know, just the the absolute <laughs> right shot at the right time, which he always does there on, on 12. But you know, any any number of things could have happened there on that shot, you know. So it's Listen, like, don't want to second guess, but at the same time, I'm just saying, I think, I think the decision on 15 as well, like, all right, if he doesn't like that, that shot above or that, you know, shot above his feet into 13 green, what about the decision on 15 yesterday not to go for it there either? Cause he hit a really good one in, in on 15 today, like hit, mm -hmm. hit it like almost, I mean, almost had a really, really makeable Eagle putt there. Just took a big hop the first I one. That's what I think that the hard thing about 15 was it just doesn't, it did not hold this year. Right. So almost no matter what you're chipping from long of that green. And, uh, I, I don't know what the easier shot is. I know like the, the, the data would probably tell you just hit it long and chip up and you're most likely to make par. You may think you have the best chance at making four spinning a wedge close, uh, from, from, you know, from the fairway hitting up into the slope instead of chipping back down hill. I don't know the answer, but I just, I, I watched a lot of golf on 15 this week and like waiting for a big hero shot, somebody to stuff it and make Eagle and just nobody could hold that green. It was just that yeah. firm. I think I think on thirteen, I just wanted to see better wedge shots. I guess. Yeah, that's that was a big thing, right? That was a huge thing I wrote down too. It was like, dude, he he's gonna replay a lot of those, and he's gonna be a little upset with his wedge game on the par fives. I didn't see all of them, but I, I all the ones I did see, especially into thirteen and into fifteen, he just did not hit the shots he needed to with with wedges. So it's weird comparing him, his scorecard, Scotty's scorecard. Obviously, he played under par all par fives for the week. He didn't give up any shots. The issue is here, Scotty. On 13 and 15 going through there five under for the week max getting through there with one under for the week and then if you look at 12 like he played 12 really really bad not just the double today but bogeys in round one and round three guys i've never seen guys struggle this hard with 12. i mean that it, it, it i don't know if i i didn't see it I, we couldn't see the bounce from where we were on like he just it, was he just a little long with the wrong spin uh into 12 like landed on the back side of that like where the fringe yeah. stops and there's Got a little it. dip right behind the green just landed on the back side of that and shot directly into the bush max was uh 14th in strokes gain off the tee for the week seventh in approach 18 around the green and 13th in putting these are courtesy of data golf of course but um so just solid across the board um uh performance in all ways because he you know i know it only matters if they go in but man he hit some lips too I yesterday know especially it, it, it could have been different but it wasn't different um but it is cool to see him back up you know last year's british open his first top 10 to come back first major this year put himself in contention like i hope on a personal level like hey let's keep building i, I think if uh, taking a broader longer term view i think it's all good stuff here here i think it's gonna it's gonna take a couple knocks at the door before we before we get the, a couple a couple uh wax at the stone as uh as max right. would, would put it i wrong. guess too the other thing with like hindsight is it's tough to like all right, this is scotty's second major second win like i think from here on out or moving forward guys are going to treat it a little bit differently when they're going up against scotty of like hey i gotta right. throw the fucking Gravity. kitchen sink out you know and like i know yesterday wasn't the day for max to to send it or to press like he got to a good spot where he needed to be but at some point it just feels like man like that's you gotta almost go full throttle at scotty the whole fucking time otherwise or, like because yeah or, because like he's got so much in the tank too where like i i feel like if if let's say ludwig doesn't double 11 or you know runs in the eagle on 15 or something i feel like scotty then takes it to like 13 like he, you know, like, that's, like that's, know. that's my favorite comment of the day. It's like, oh, no, he was just going to get to whatever number he needed yeah. to get. So it's all arbitrary. Yeah. Well, I'll say the scary thing is like, well, the whole time you're saying that TC, you know, I was thinking of was like, or, or as sad as it might be, or you start playing for second. Yeah. Honestly, like, I, I, the points. I mean, I, I, I don't know how you're getting past that guy. I really don't when he, when he's on, when he's even remotely on. So I don't know.
I want to uh, I want to talk a couple big picture things because I think at least that stretch on the front nine, I would say through, let's say, I mean, I was having a bad time after Max's shot, but that was that was high, high, high drama. So I'll say at least through Scotty getting Scotty getting through twelve or thirteen. I mean, that's I, I would say as good of a golf tournament as I've watched. Uh, so. I, I mean, that was like it's kind of as good as it gets. TC, I'm gonna start with you. What what's one thing? Why 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 was it like that? What's one thing that made this Masters like? as good as it was um good question i think it's because it demanded truly the best out of the out, out of iron play where it's one thing when guys can use slopes or funnel things in it's another thing when like it was just so exacting out there and even after they kind of slowed it down today a little bit it was still that way they were still firm and and you know firm and bouncy and it was, it was just i think we get so many rare occasions to see these guys have to be at their complete best and when we do get it like the cream tends to rise to the top and i think you know you just take one look at this leaderboard and like it separated out the best player in the world from the rest and he did it and convinced i mean he beat everybody except for ludwig by seven shots <laughs> <laughs> god wow would you phrase it like that can i pick up on that tc to just expand to say it, it was such a complete test, right? I mean, the, the iron play is very important, but when it's that difficult and when you have a course that is that exacting, it's going to emphasize the other parts of the game that much more, like the short game. Like that, it just, again, just it, it just got hammered home to me again. When you stand, everybody knows this, when you go to Augusta, like the, the slopes and all the drama is just way more, it's way bigger in person, right? And then watching guys try to navigate chips and just watching guys hit to a certain spot and just like, oh, dead there, can't play that. Nope, that's dead there. And watching how how uh, tactical you had to be to avoid that one, and to how you got out of those situations, I go back to the bunker on the third hole today. More and 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 oh. Scotty both drove it into the left bunker, uh, short of three green. Uh, everyone was around talking about it, and we're like, I don't think anybody can get it within 15 feet of this. Colin hits it, goes 15, 20 feet past. Was like, yeah, it was actually a pretty good shot. And Scotty just gets up there and leaves it somehow underneath the hole. I don't know if they had different lies. I couldn't tell from where I was standing, but it was like. That was another one I circled. Was just like, dude, this is a guy that is not only the best iron player, he's also separating himself with around the green. And not all golf courses are Augusta. Not all golf courses, uh, even major championship courses, are set up that well to to emphasize this part of the skill. But if you want to know why we bitch so much about long rough around the greens, go back to this tournament. Like this is the turn. This is the example of like why it's so dumb to have long rough around the greens that will stop balls close to it that make it the same exact shot you got to play on repeat because this golf course required so many different shots and strategies both it, you're worrying about how you're going to position yourself back to from the fairway which also affects your tee shot like this is exactly why i know not every course can be augusta but long rough around greens stinks and this is exactly why I think the other thing on what you guys are saying about the exacting test too, at least for like a, a more casual TV audience is like guys are still making birdies, right? Like you get, sometimes you get us opens like this where it's like, dude, you just, you have to, the best possible shot is 30 feet. And like, yes. I love that. I think that's sick. But like Augusta of course has the, the mix of like, Oh no, you can still stuff one on 14. If you catch the right slope on nine, you can still hit it close. Okay. No, the shot on 11. Yeah. Best you're going to do there is, is 25 feet. Uh, but when you get to, you know what I mean? Like there, there's enough kind of like ebbs and flows and, you know, smoke them if you got them uh, moments that just, it, it's just the best. Every year, I don't think it's the best and it's the best. It, it I think like, one of the, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Randy. Randy. No, I was just going to add my two cents was it, it felt like starting Friday, everything was earned. You yeah. know, if, if you were going to make a birdie anywhere, it was earned. And I, I think years past that sometimes the masters got to feeling like, everybody could kind of take advantage of those little slopes and ridges and, and find the funnel. And I, I don't know, you know, credit, credit to them, the, the, the tweaks and the work that they're doing to, you know, um, change the course a little bit. Of course, the weather was, was pretty nasty, but DJ, I think that's it. Like it felt like a U.S. open, but with some contouring and familiar familiarity, yeah. um, that guys could still do stuff. Um, and I, I thought it was kind of the, the perfect, combination of all and, of that. and a great leaderboard and the weather and it was just like it was just and it's like, like those factors probably yeah. can't do anything but produce a great leaderboard you yeah. know like yep. after so, after the third round it was like yeah man like look at all those those guys just all hit the shit out of the golf ball <laughs> <laughs> to your point randy i think over 
recent years in in different spurts i i don't want to say i'm like i'm again like augusta let's just call it 100 out of 100 let's say it like slid down to like a 94 out of 100 to me for a lot of the reasons you listed like it just you know i don't know it's an imperfect golf course is how i've felt over the last four or five years but when they get the conditions right and that's kind of out of their control and it's like this it's like oh no 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 it's like 100 like it's it's absolutely incredible it it any golf course is going to dip down a little bit when you don't get the perfect conditions, but like in the best conditions, that's the best. It wasn't the most exciting golf tournament I've ever watched or seen, but it was like the best, probably one that I can often, and that's recency, I'm sure, but that's, that's, that's how I'm feeling right now. I think there's a push pull between when the conditions aren't exceptional, like the par five seem to shine, right? Mm -hmm. Like those are, you know, guys can, can put the pedal down and really get aggressive I felt like this year when the conditions were optimal, holes like three and seven and 14 really, really shined. And I think that's a, like, cause those, those margins are so thin there and you're, you know, there's a, there's a very fine line between a birdie and a bogey on 14, yes. for instance, yesterday and today, both. And, mm -hmm. you know, or, or knowing, all right, you know, these guys are playing out way left of this pin on 17 or, you know, there's, there's a very, very fine line between a good shot and a great shot. And, um, but that's not always readily apparent on, you know, 13 and 15 when guys are just pinning their ears back. Right. Uh, it's, it's also funny to me that like, we talk about it like this, where <laughs> when we go to the British open, it's kind of like, Hey, it's firm this year, guys deal with yeah, it. Like yeah. it's, it's so much more like manipulative, Oh and, yeah, yeah. you know, in a bubble For here sure. versus, you know, all right, I think I think we got an arm warming up in the bullpen, Solly. I think KVV is uh, is going to drop in. He was over at the Scotty uh, press conference. I'm sure he's got all kinds of nuggies to drop on us from that. Before we do, I mean, it's been the bit of the week. Uh, voicemails. Uh, <laughs> let's get one more one more hot 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 news from from Solly Cody, please. Max Homa, man of the people. How did he spend a long morning before an afternoon tea time at Augusta National? Shopping at Walmart. That's right. It's his wife's birthday on Tuesday. He went to Walmart this morning to buy her some flowers. Pros are just like us. <laughs> Is that true? Or did you make that one up? Swear to God. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah. You he get like, at Walmart? Just yeah, like, yeah, he's doing fine. He went to Walmart. He went and shopped at Walmart this morning. Like, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah, you had to go get flowers for, for Lacey's birthday. But that's all I could uh, drum up today. It was too tense out there. I, I couldn't able, uh, wasn't well, able to make it. That's fine, actually. It's good good timing. Why don't you go grab KVV? Because right. actually, it sounded like some celebrities got the voicemail line uh, oh, today, no. and, and we've got some, we've had some call ins. I couldn't believe I was touched and honored by some of the people that called in today. So I, I believe the first one was Vern Lundquist. Uh, Cody, is that right? Do you want me to go get my guy first? Yes, please. Okay, I'll see, I'll Thank be you. back shortly. Okay. Hello, no laying it up podcast. Vern Lundquist here. Folks, before I go, I just want to say that a few parting words. Gary Player told me years ago I should eat more salads and <laughs> not have a bourbon at night, and perhaps he was right. But I also want to say, in your life have you ever seen a bigger dickhead? <laughs> Thank you for the memories. For, yeah, perfect timing. For 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 legal reasons, of course, that was oh. parody. That was not yeah. actually Verd Lundquist. We love Verd Lundquist. Uh, that was our dear dear KVV. Uh, Kev, how are you, my man? I am swell. I I'm so honored to that Vern called in for my my uh, final <laughs> show this week. That was very exciting of him. Uh, what was what what was your day like today? Where were you? What'd you see? What'd you do? Did you watch golf? I did. Yeah, I did some writing in the morning. Uh, watched a lot of golf in the afternoon. Uh. Yeah, I uh, I heard of a sports writer who walked out of the out of the uh, press center briefly with a without his with his cell phone in his pocket. I don't know who that guy was, but he was mm -hmm. terrified briefly and had to go back inside. Uh, yeah, I was I followed uh, Max and uh, Luddy for a bit, and then really it became clear that Scotty was the dude in the story, uh, and uh, just it came out of his press conference. And man, as uh, you could imagine, pretty great mood. Uh, just really was. You know, he told a pretty cool story about sitting down with his friends this morning and he was like you know he had that whole thing two years ago where he's like i'm not ready for this moment i don't know with meredith and he talked a little bit about this uh thing earlier where he's in a, such a different place uh in his life now he said this morning to cities his friends i wish i didn't like winning so much 
because I just really, really want to win. And I just don't know if I like that feeling of like living and dying with that. And he sort of said, you know, that his friends kind of talked to him about his faith and stuff and how, you know, this was kind of all preordained. But I just thought that was kind of a neat introspective thing where he was like, God, I, I want this so fucking bad. And I just, <laughs> I don't know if that's a healthy feeling. So <laughs> that's a pretty cool way to look at that. I love that he wants it that bad. Yeah. That, I, that to me, I know. That's good to know, man. I think Kyle Porter and I were talking as we were walking around, and I was like kind of having these philosophical discussions with Kyle or with Solly or whomever as the late in the game of the Masters. And I think the rest of the world ought to be real scared because there's nothing that Scotty like is longing for, right? He's not going to like do a Duvall and like, man, is this all there is? Like he's already super content in his life. And yeah, parenting's going to throw a curveball. And I asked him a question kind of about that. And we can talk about that in a second. But what if Scotty's like, kind of like Jack Nicholas was, or just like, ah, I'm just going to go be a family man and win a bunch of majors. Like that, that could be Scotty. Eric, do you think, believe this? Do you think Scotty, <laughs> Kevin, I'm going to ask you a question that uh, purely your opinion. I, mm -hmm. You know, a month ago, we heard Scotty at the players press conference talking about the, the, the split. And it, it was the most pointed remarks I've heard from him and honestly okay. that I think we've heard from many a person on the PGA side just talking about like, yeah, they, they left, you know, essentially they left whatever people can go back and read the press conference. My question is that has to be fuel for him, right? Like yeah. he's got to use that. And, and I was just thinking of the green jacket ceremony today with, uh, with Rom putting the jacket on him, like there had to be a little part of Scotty that just relished that. I know he'll never say it publicly, but but what do you think, right? Like he 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 has that competitiveness, right? Yeah, I think he wants to kick everybody's butt who's in front of him, and I think that you know he's a little bit annoyed that people are sort of you know I think running from that, and you know he he's not a cocky person, but he is like I really want to beat everybody, and so. I don't, he doesn't get involved in the sort of the, the board stuff, but I do think he, there's a little bit like, you know what? Like, let's just freaking stop whining about this and just keep kicking yeah. ass. Like, whoever's around here, that's who I'll beat. Like, you tell me the guys are going to come back, great. I'll beat them <laughs> then too. You tell me they're not going to be here, then screw it. I'll beat these guys. Like, that's, I think, how he kind of looks at it without being outwardly like braggadocious about it. What, uh, what did he say about the parenting situation? impending parenting situation i should say yeah he actually had a really i thought sort of funny comment he said you know when you get married all these people are like oh man your life's over like oh like well, what are you gonna do you're gonna be a married guy and he's randy, like that's what randy said to me yeah and he was like you know what i was like no i think it's the right call he's like no dude come on bro you're gonna miss out on so much yeah dude. exactly and he said you know what man like marriage has been pretty awesome for me i really like being married and I think I'm going to like being parent like Lame. even more. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm all I, like, I get it. I think that there's people out there who just like look at that perspective and be like, oh, God. But you know what? This dude is married and has kids like it's pretty cool. And I think that's a pretty kind of interesting perspective to put that out there and be like, oh, man, like, is it actually cool to love your wife? Like, yeah, it is. Just, <laughs> just so we're no, so we're clear. <laughs> Taste it. Randy. I, think, yeah. I feel like Scotty should should. uh should do some other stuff scotty style mm. in the I was gonna, uh, champions dinner <laughs> i know we're of course gonna have our, our final champions dinner unveilings at the end of this i hope tc's got at least one or two things scotty style tc everywhere menu. i went today people what <laughs> please please tell me about mr tc's menu that there are like, bumping for this he said it was like one of the hardest said, things he's ever done putting his his like hypothetical <laughs> menu straight together. up i woke up in the middle of the night like taking notes i was like oh yeah scratch that do that is is no, just wait people he's in, on, in april <laughs> i get it I oh i tried it. to craft it around that kvb i wanted to ask <laughs> yeah uh you know were, were more people saying that or were more people going up to third leg greg mm. uh he said hundreds yeah. if not thousands was, unanimous. Instagram. <laughs> unanimously uh yeah i didn't catch the thousands of people <laughs> the, the rippling of support for uh greg i did hear some crusher support out there tc so i want you to know that's kind of maybe the the most popular uh, branding of the teams right now uh didn't see any cliques gear i no shit as i was uh walking up 18 I heard a kid who was describing Solly's uh, scoops bit to his like mom. He's like, oh, champ, champ, Scotty Chevro is the champion. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's very apropos because it's, you know, scoops is a Dallas guy. That's right. Or a ticket, yeah. you know.
Hey, what was the what was the dynamic between like Scotty and and Colin out there? Randy's boy Colin yeah. that uh, you know kind of looked like he was he was in it until he wasn't there. You know, I I've always found Colin to be a little bit too corporate for my tastes in terms of like introspection. But he had a really cool comment about uh, he said that he turned to his caddy on number five and Scotty had hit it like thirty yards past them, and they hit a five iron into five, and then Scotty just like had this beautiful like s8 iron into the middle of the green and he said he turned to his caddy was like i think it's a little easier to hold this green with a freaking good eight iron instead of the skanky five iron that i just hit he's like that's just he's like i gotta get something i gotta get better like he i think he really figured out like man i do not have enough game to compete with scotty when scotty is good and that's he this like i gotta maybe i gotta do speed training maybe i gotta do something he's like i used to think i was great from i could get it anywhere in the fairway and i could trust my irons and then i met a guy who's like 30 yards longer than me and just as good of an iron player so uh going back to the drawing board in the morikawa house we've been shitting on colin pretty pretty steadily the last last 36 hours or so but like all the dog stuff and all that i i, I give colin credit he was pretty self-effacing in his in his yeah with a lot of shoes uh <laughs> in his uh post round it was great and uh, he was yeah. like you know what like I got greedy. I was yeah. forcing the issue at the wrong times. Um, but at the end of the day, like he hit some awful, awful drives. He, he missed so many putts low. Like it's he was fighting it. It's just like, all right, man, like I'm good. Yeah. Like I like I felt like they should have offered him a buyout on like 14. <laughs> was like, hey, to man. play alone then, or were the other players gotten to move back? Did your boy yeah. Hoygaard get a get a buyout after that first tee oh, shot? What, just what like, oh, fuck, we're not we're not doing this, man. Why don't you no t sixteen tap, tap, tap him on the shoulder? Just mm -mm. hey, what, no, what, sir. Please, sir. That's enough. That thing up. Yeah, we're good here. KBV did uh, did Scotty talk at all in his presser about the putter and making the switch to the mallet? Did did that come up at all? Because I know you know. Obviously, we we heard a bunch about that. Yeah. He didn't talk about the mallet, but you know what he did talk about is like working with Phil Kenyon. Like this is going to be in my story, but he walked right off of it's much smaller guy. Than I realized. I, absolutely. And he, Big hug. he bear hugged Phil Kenyon and lifted him off his feet into the air. And I was like, wow, that's, that's humiliating. So humiliating. Yeah, for a guy with a sore ball. neck. That's like an interesting, like deadlift press right there. But I thought what was interesting about that is he said he it's when he was flying home from East Lake last year. He turned to his agent and said, you know what? I think I need to see a putting coach. And the agent was like, I think I agree. Like I was thinking of that too. And he was a little bit nervous about talking to his, his coach, Randy Smith, who had coached him since he was seven years old about everything. He, he kind of was like, I, I would kind of like to see Phil Kenyon. And Randy was like, yeah, that's great. Let's do it. He said, I, I really think that was a cool thing because he could have been like, his ego could have been hurt. He could have been felt like, you know, I've been with you this whole time. Why do we need to change something? And Phil came in and he said he watched like for the way that Phil worked with other players watched him like he was like Keegan Bradley's coach and F uh, Matt Fitzpatrick's coach. And he said that he works differently with every player. Right. So he wasn't going to drill one style into me. It was going to fit something to what I wanted. And I think as much as we've sort of credit the mallet, I feel like the, the posture stuff and the taking the line off the ball and just like being more athletic, all of that was what really kind of made him back to being a, a good putter again, hmm. man. Kev, uh, We'll let you get out of here. I know you've, you've got a lot of writing to do. Look for your piece either tonight or tomorrow morning. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how the how the hashtag process goes. But uh, hey, by the way, will you remind Max to set his fucking lineup this week? I will try. Yeah, I feel like the commissioner needs to do that. I got a couple <laughs> notes saying that the commissioner was a disgrace because he needs to have stepped in, set his lineup. But uh, I did ask Max a press uh, conference uh, question in the press conference. I said, "What will tomorrow like?" be like and he said you know what i haven't had a drink in like forever so i think i'm gonna sit around and have like several <laughs> which is a great great oh, walk off quote uh, here here yeah. uh all right well why don't you go get the commish kvv and uh while while he heads out cody i think maybe we had one more voicemail to play another uh, maybe a retort to the first voicemail even good evening dj i'm calling from the greatest golf course in the world augusta and this has been one of the most unpleasant days of my life. They're out here celebrating a man, Vern Lundquist, with a stomach out to here. I know that you called uh, your blog No Laying It Up, but you should change the name to No Laying Down. More sit-ups live longer. Congrats to Scotty Scheffler. The most courageous Texan since Harry S. Truman is one of my idols. Yes, sir. 
Good day. I, I will issue a correction on behalf of Mr. Player. I think Truman maybe was from Missouri. I, I, he might I have been thinking say, of Lyndon Johnson. Or, can't believe he didn't go with LBJ there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe one of those. One of those guys. K, yeah, I see. I see KBB still sheepishly <laughs> walking out there. I know. I know that's not what you were looking like, for there. I, listen, I met Lyndon Johnson, but I just absolutely choked. I just there was people looking at me like, "What the frick are you doing here?" This stupid ass voice, and I I choked hard. All right, so well, apologies to Mr. Truman and Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Uh, guys, I, while Sully's mm-hmm. while Sully's heading back in, let's. What do you say? Should we hit a couple Twitter questions? We, we you know, please. The commission always says he's going to take questions. He never takes questions. Yeah. We, we here for the please. people. We here for you. First of all, from our, our guy Grant Gates, what's Scotty going to do when he actually has perspective? TC. I mean, are we worried? Are we worried about that? If we are, for sure. Well, I mean, what if you know? What if they have twins or something like that? Right. I mean, I I could see Scotty and Meredith having like four or five kids just right and just buku yeah. perspective yeah so. uh t- uh randy this is from colin lamar how many majors again go back to the to the tiger comp how many majors does scotty need to win this year to make the tiger comps justifiable uh three i think that's fair that's exactly where my head was at like, like if we want to be real real yeah. I think two of the four this year and then he wins the Masters next year or yeah, yeah or three. I think, you know. Uh guys, I, I got a question here from from a couple couple listeners. Uh what was Thirsty Tom Kim doing there at, <laughs> at the end? This is from Ball Knower. That's DC. from Romper Butt Cheek 69. <laughs> I knew as soon as it almost ruined the moment. As soon as as soon as Scotty's walking off, he's waving Ted Scott up. We're come on, brother. We're gonna do this together. And I was like, oh no, that's Tom Kim. This is, this is all we're gonna hear about after the after the round. Wait, so, I mean, imagine how good of a day he had. He goes out, he shoots the low round of the day. He's feeling himself all afternoon. I'm sure he had some pops. Like I, I bet he was just having the biggest time ever. Right, hanging finish, around, I get a free ride back to Dallas with, with yeah. Scotty. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, can I, on the last question of the tiger comps, can I just can I can we clarify? Are we doing tiger comps or are we saying like since tiger, like best since tiger? Are we officially doing tiger? Yeah, comps? no, it's since it's question okay. tiger and it's like tiger it's, comps. It's, it's like high end gear, right? Yeah. Like, does he have that high end gear that tiger had? So, data golf runs like a uh, has like that all time performance metric, which is uh, you know, it it, it like celebrate it, it, it evaluates like your peak golf and Scotty's current golf is fourth best all time. In terms of like the best run ever, and he they 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 tweeted that he's likely to slide up to number three. Um, back of the envelope calculation puts him at number three behind VJ. Again, this is in the strokes gained era, but VJ in two thousand and four um, was the second best era uh, top level golf stretch of golf. Hmm. Uh, all right, two more quick questions, Sally. I'm going to throw this one to you from Matt Shriver. Has strokes gain slash analytics ruined 12? It's too early in the round for people to take on the risk of this flag anymore. 17 at Sawgrass delivers way more now. Um, I don't think I don't think it's analytics to just say, like, yeah, there's a you could you get a one-shot penalty when you hit in the water. I think that people probably pretty pretty much pretty knew that pretty much knew that. I think with this 80 years to figure that out. With this uh, firmness, there was just no re- you can't hold it back there. So what's you're literally just trying to find the safest spot to hit it. I mean uh yeah it i i would not blame analytics for that one and some of it today was just you know guys like some guys just didn't like weren't in a position to make that call right then right like yes. yeah you know i mean yeah should they should they reroute the back nine right <laughs> I mean, you, know, you get 12 to 17 yeah. and <laughs> you know, yeah, guys can you imagine I another question baseball? here from from a, a a Cliff Hodges in the comments? TC, when will Solly realize that there is a difference between top fives and top tens and majors, and give Tommy the respect that he deserves? Hmm. It's a great, great question. This was yeah. his fourth <laughs> top five in the last nine majors. You feel uh, me? Gosh, that's just T. All right, I want one hour fifteen minute mark. I'm gonna just jot. I'm gonna have this forever. I want to see how how we can apply that into TC's future takes. <laughs> TC, I, I will, I, I'm a ride for you. I thought Tommy had a great week. You know, I didn't ever think, 69. Stick that then. neck out, Deej. Get yeah, out no, there. I, did. I think him finishing third, I think is good. <laughs> I think daddy. He's giraffing on us. Look at him. Exactly. I, I'm, I stand with TC on that one. I don't care. The, the issue is never like Tommy plays really well in majors. He does this a lot. Like Tommy's a 
he 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 steps up when the golf gets harder. It, the issue is winning, TC. We we've seen this from Tommy. I'm really happy for him. I Randy back me a, up here. I do have a problem with people calling this one a stolen Valor yellow. Like he no, was, I wouldn't say that. That's more what I was getting at. I thought I thought it was a really nice week. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call that stolen Valor. It was a completely like you know, he was never in contention for the win. I told TC, Tommy reminds me of like that NBA team that wins 45 to 48 games a year, but simply doesn't have the the talent to actually contend for an NBA title. You know, they're, they're, they're good. They have a super high floor. They, they, they're well coached. They, they play good basketball, but they just can't get the title. It kind of reminds me of, of, of coach Spoh's teams of the last you know, four to I six. I think you're years. gonna piss. I think you're gonna piss Jordan off saying <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Jordan, you you've got the keys. Feel free to come in at any time if you want. If you want to talk, Coach Spo. <laughs> it's heat culture. Is there? Is there Tommy Boy culture? There is. is. Is there? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just one stuff too. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering. <laughs> Listen, we're we're always we're always whale hunting. Always finding the grinders. Always finding. The guys who are, you know, who are, who who are sneaky. sneaky Who's we? Are we talking about the heat? Or are we talking <laughs> about L heat? Yeah. Yes, yes. If we're Low really go, diving into L heat. the heat calm. Um, oh, it's L heat. It it can it can be L heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, L Fleetwood, if you will. Um, yeah. Little little hurt by that. I just don't want to accept reality. Uh, JP out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, last question. Uh, we can just whip around here. This is I always love the single names on uh, on on Twitter X, the, the website formerly known as Twitter. This is from Gomers. Uh, what's the worst hole at Augusta? Just a little fly around here. In, in its way. current iteration, or, or yeah, right right now, right now, Randy, where are you going? I I think it's eleven for me. Hmm. Mm. It's interesting. I'm gonna say I'm gonna totally TC this one and say I, I think it's seven, but I also think maybe seven was my favorite hole of the day. So like I think it's the worst hole on the course, but it might have been the best hole of the day today with that pin. With a good hole location, seven can be sweet, but yeah. like overall as a whole, it's pr it's got to be the weakest. That it's, that's a cool hole location, but the other ones on that green aren't aren't as cool. It. Uh, oh, what it, am I saying? Fuck sixteen. I didn't. I, I blacked <laughs> out. Sixteen's the worst hole. I'm sorry. Did you get any? Was there any movement, or did you feel any momentum, any any sea change, and maybe the, the the small group that's pushing to have the bunker put in the, the middle bunker. of that game? No, we we are looking for more voices. We we, 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 we need to sign one of those signatures. online petitions. Yeah, they do take suggestions here. I, I can I can drop one. Change dot org going right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I think they should move it back across the the, the uh, creek, like drain the pond, put the creek back in. Bring the Faws in. That's his specialty. I, I think I, that'd be great. I will say again, or you should have to skip it. But continue. One Super of four days you need to skip it. <laughs> Choose your so day. You get to Sunday and you haven't skipped it. Yeah. <laughs> the the best spots that are really are like 11, 12, and fifteen, sixteen. Just the proximity of those holes. Like when the action gets good, but when it comes down to two group, the final two groups, like it was today. Like watching, uh, you know, Max. Uh, you know, waiting on like for groups to tee off on 12 to hit a shot onto 11, like the proximity of all that, the un you cannot avoid like the stuff that's happening and the flashing of scores up on the, on this leaderboard as it happens. That, that is very, very, very cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in on that. I, I thought one of my favorite things I, I saw all week was the uh, Garrett from the fried egg made a, a thing about like why the roars work the way they do at augusta and the way it's routed how how often you come back to the middle of that property yeah. and how many intersection points there are it was look that up on the, the friday instagram it was an awesome so awesome. cool there with like you know seven two all that stuff right in there as well eight t uh all that i would say for me it's it's four right now mm. i think four is pretty it's joyless kind of, yeah that's kind of a a speed bump it's just I, not I, very fun I know I'm supposed to enjoy five. I don't. Um, I, I just don't love that green shape for that long and hard of a hole. Like the, the, the slopes and bunkers just don't make a ton of sense to me. It, it's that I'm just going to throw that out there. I don't know if it's the least, my least favorite or the worst hole, but it's, it's just doesn't really work for me. Uh, all right. I, I've, I've got an idea. We're, we're going to go to the, the vaunted five box just for a time. You know, I know it gets chaotic when we go to the five box, but we've got a guy 
in the pen. He came oh, in geez. Thursday, uh, oh, you know, yeah, or Friday actually, and and he just had the performance of the week. Did we send him back to Triple A? <laughs> no, no, he, he did. Come on, these amigos. We sent him back to extended spring training. How <laughs> pitching simulated games? Good, good to see you. Neil, We're great, great, Neil. Great to see you, my man. What What was your biggest takeaway today? Before we really get into the main event. Uh God, Scotty's a Terminator. Um, and I felt like his swing's always been fascinating to me. Uh, not an exciting, not getting a lot of fist pumps, not a lot of juice, but uh, it's really nice to have the, uh, the 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 pace car, man. Like we're it's kind of back to like, all right, we have the we have the benchmark. Can you, you know, it's just kind of the consistent line. And uh, the world I think we thought Rom in the swimming pool. Yeah, exactly. The world that's perfect. Uh, we kind of thought Rom might be that guy. Rom opted out. You know, Cougar, Cougar was number lost one. Cougar lost the edge, right? <laughs> so, so here comes Scotty, and and I'm I'm happy. I think that's good for golf. I think this was a, a good day for golf. I'm gutted for Max. Uh, you know, would have loved a little more juice on the back nine. But Randy, like we said on Friday, that was the edge of uncomfortable. Okay, yeah. and that's good, right? I think Mr. Glean DJ would be very happy with Absolutely. with uh, a lot of gleaning for Max. Who what whoever this psychologist is that. He and the blow pig are working with. I need to get her number. And everybody else. I mean, Julie Elion. God, she must be doing wonders, man. These guys are journaling. I, I love the journal. I'd love her Honestly, to spark some joy in me to journal. This is I great feel like stuff. Some I might of these guys, less. Uh, yeah. maybe <laughs> some of these guys should be buying out the rest of her time so that she can't sure. work with anybody else. That's a great take. I mean, we today. need a. I know she probably doesn't want to get it, you know, in front of the camera, but uh, we need need to know more. Because uh, it seems to be working. Uh, all right. So the reason we really want to bring you in here, Neil, is like I, I feel like we've got a lot of takes flying around. It feels like we're at a pivotal moment in the game of golf with what Scotty did today. Oh, uh, it, it feels like we are at the at, on the precipice of like potentially some historic stuff. And so, T TC, I know that you you tapped out of this question earlier, but I don't care. We're we're doing we're coming back to it, and we're just going to put all these in a Google Doc, and we're going to put our name on some stuff. This is going to be called for the record. Okay, and me and Cody are going to start a Google Doc, and we're going to just see where everybody stands. So I need everybody to weigh in. You can you can elaborate as much as you'd like. Uh, the first question is going to be how many Masters will Scotty win? And Neil, as the as the new uh, the new participant here, I'm going to give you the honor. You know you don't want to give me that honor. Sheesh. Uh, Eighteen. Eight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say four. I think he wins two more. Uh, and that feels low. That feels conservative right now. But I don't want to get like, uh, I don't know what there's one other guy. Like, what is it? Ar Arnie is the only one with four. And yep. then Tiger and Jack have five and six. Yep. God, that's just it's heady. That's heady stuff, man. <laughs> I I mean, that's like no oxygen tanks above camp four stuff. Like we, but I'm going to, I'm going to say it four. who wants to go next. I'm I'll gonna go say with five. him. Oh, so I'll all say right. five. I, I would have said four, but I'm, I'm. Let me get swept up in the moment, and I'll say five. So I'll I'm going four. there with you, man. I think I'm, if I'm throwing all these tiger comps, I think that's going to be the spot where he catches tiger. I, th I think he. I think he gets to five. I'll say four. Somebody Randy, say two. Say do two. It. Do it. Double down. No, no, no. no. I, I, uh, I like four. I was like going to get cute and say three, but I can't do it. And like even like his scripting today, the peach just worked. Worked with the it's green great. jacket. It was. It was it was soft and and thoughtful, but you know still still topical. Uh, TC, I, I'm going to throw the next one to you. This was, of course, Ludwig's first major. Uh, he is what I believe 24 years old. Let's just do it now. How, how many majors for Ludwig? Uh, at least six. <laughs> wow. So that could be anywhere all the way up to 20. Yeah, <laughs> totally. It could be up to. I mean, why limit it to 20? <laughs> At least six. <coughs> that's wow. so freaking many. How is Morikawa going to get to eight? Well, uh, don't, don't, God, we know, no, we, that's that's. that's like, we're giving him a chance to surf, buy out of that. We called in serve <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to another high noon on that note. Randy, how many how many majors for Luddy? Three. Okay, I'm going to say two. Man, you and I are fishing in the same pond. I'm yeah. going to say two as well, and I think that's a so that's a lot. That's a lot of majors. Career. That's yeah. amazing, Randy. I'd like to I'd like to roll with you on three. That's what I had in my head. I think the 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 drive of the golf ball and everything else is so so solid. Like 
maybe not as touchy around the greens yet, but I mean, the, the foundation is there. I think you said that earlier, Deej. The foundation of the house is it's really solid. Yeah. So that, that feels like it's got some longevity. I'm going to say three. Uh, all right. This one, you know, I just, I wouldn't be my, doing my job if I didn't ask. I feel like I know this is going to be a yes, no. Does, does Max win a major? Yes. Yes. I say yes. I think, I, I think we're, we're pounding on that stone, Randy. It's going to break apart. I think yes. And I think it's a U.S. Open. Of Hell course, yeah. I think yes. <laughs> Okay, I just needed to, you know, we might as well, where we go one, we go all on, on that one. But I, would I say think it's either a U.S. Open too. or it's the PGA Championship at Valhalla, like next month. Like almost like a post, post hype little bump. He's got the, uh, I don't know, it, we're, uh, this is a weird comparison, but I'm going to say Jason Duffner of like, you start to get close and it's like, oh God, I'm just going to do it, you know? Yeah. And I, I hope that he doesn't just disappear <laughs> after that, but that's how it felt like with Duffner was like, oh, God, I got to get it done. I'm hitting the ball too good. You know, I feel like Max is getting to that point of like, just just, just get it out of your system, man. T Tiger had a great quote yesterday. Like, he was asked how it was, and he's like, you know, I've played with him a few times prior now, and and his ball flight is just different from from most of the other guys out here. And and God. Tiger said, like, it's only a matter of time before he, he starts knocking them down. Like, that's a pretty – High was, praise. Yeah. Tiger doesn't. Tiger doesn't give that out very often. Randy, we've been saying that since Griffith Park. <laughs> we, I know. I mean, we, we, were, we were so early on that block during Strap. Tiger's like, trying to God. upstream us. Like oh. Tiger heard yeah. us say that on yeah. Strap. We were like, "Yo, yeah. Max hits it different than like Zach Blair." Well, you guys like, know how I feel. I mean, he's just kind of the ball. Just like veers, doesn't really turn. It's just really good. Can I? Uh, Cody shared it, but can I read Max posted on Instagram? Uh, I, I think Please. this is worth sharing. Um, he gets into it, but then he says, winning doesn't always come with a trophy. Winning is fickle. Learning, working, growing, and progressing is the dream. I'd love to have won a green jacket today. It hurts. Losing sucks. But with the right mindset, losing leads to better. And my goal in life is to constantly improve and see where that takes me. Hopefully that's major championships. And maybe it's not. I'm okay with either, knowing that I'm doing everything I can to make it happen. I have a sneaky suspicion it will but that's to be determined by future Sundays. Like, Hell yeah. You know, that's, how are you going to go against my, that that's mindset? My, that's my pro right there. That's yeah. my, exactly. pro. my head pro. It's pretty cool spit. knowing that when you do get it done, that everybody at that club or whatever club you do get it done at, you're the guy that they're rooting for as well. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see our guy, Big Lot, Eric Lottery. Just going to call that first out. First in the comments. <laughs> Thank you. The goat. We gotta clap and cheeks all over. We gotta have him on the pod sometime. So, uh, don't worry, Max should be clapping soon. <laughs> I think that the uh, all right. So that was kind of the amuse bouche yes no question. Uh, this is it's about to get a little more uncomfortable. Mm. Mm. Tommy Lad, the, the, does it ever happen? Yeah, one major it happens. Time. It happens at Troon this year. If not, it happens sometime in the next year and a half, two years. What about a no. PGA Tour event, TC? <laughs> well, I mean, a major championship is a PJ Tour event, you know. Well, maybe not open championship, is it? Okay. Well, honestly, I would almost respect his career more if he never won a regular PJ Tour event, and just one major. major, and then a bunch cool. of BDEs, obviously. Around the obviously, world. it's all you're saying. One, I'll say he gets one. I'm giving out a lot of majors tonight. I, I, I don't. Know. I'm they're a little. Starting to, oh, it's starting it's easy to do. Up. I'm a little concerned for Tommy, TC. I'm gonna say does not win one, and I hate Neil, that because Neil, I like, how how old do you think Tommy is? I think that he's 34, it's 33, yeah. 33, okay. just you know turned who, 33. You know who else got cut short at age 33? People forget that, TC. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is he's 33. I feel like he's you know he's one of the best swingers in the game. I I, I just I don't like like why do we talk about Max like all like in the in these glowing terms and, and tommy's got this and grant i know max has won pga tour events and all that i just feel like this guy keeps doing it and putting himself in the position i felt like he bogey free round today like yes he he needs to get out there in front and really insert himself in after round one or round two i think but man like it just doesn't feel that different the age wise the career progression wise like they're pretty similar players in a lot of respects so you qualified it with like the the thing though like yeah max wins a ton <laughs> like that's kind of that is the thing 
Yeah, no, I know. I mean, <laughs> totally. But also, like, yeah, like Tommy, Tommy has a shitload of great finishes in majors, and Max doesn't. Like, that's another thing too, right? Like, there's, you know, I don't think those two things are like canceling each other out or anything like that. But I mean, they're coming from different positions in that standpoint. But it's just Tommy's been involved so much over the last six, seven years that I feel like people think he's older than he is. He's fucking thirty three. Like he's not. He's not thirty eight or forty. Right. You know? I think there's something there. I I, I would agree with that. I, I'm gonna. Gosh. I'm right stuck on that like 0. 0.5. I, I could really go, could really, really, really go either way. I, can, I'm I, gonna, can I totally I'll, just flip this one right there? Like everything you just said, TC, why does it apply for Tommy and not Xander? Because I just like straight up don't believe in Xander at all. Well, now we've kind of arrived at the crux of the issue. Oh, my, my, <laughs> my top 10 play hit. Yeah. yeah. A tax I, refund. I think Xander's going to you... win. Yeah, I think Xander's going to win one more than tommy I don't, I don't think tommy gets one not everybody wins major i, I don't think he's i just worry it. a little bit about tommy's putting tc i mean i, I agree with you he hits the he, he i love watching him hit the ball i, His I really putting like stats tommy. aren't I that just, bad like i know it just looks it just doesn't look good though that's a problem for me it doesn't pass for all my good finishes tc help help me out because I, i'm not looking at like his wikipedia or anything when has he truly like been in the the cauldron I, I know he's got lots of top tens good major finishes shinnecock but... right with 63 on sunday but he was kind of yeah, even that was yeah, coming like not really in it that's and that's like what i'm saying is like he needs to get he, off to better starts british open stuff. last year british open last year yeah, yeah he wasn't really in yeah that. but even then he wasn't in it by the time saturday at 4 p.m by the around. time tc by the time i was on the time time flight to flight international germany flight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say he gets a weird, sloppy, messed up open championship. That's that's kind of a all I'm saying I, too. I, is, uh, I agree right, with guys, the sentiment. I agree with the sentiment. Like he's a he yeah. plays really really well in majors. If you keep doing that, you're you're bound yeah. to fall. Into Some, one. Sometimes it's just, it's just sample size, right? And he's you know so, sometimes it's just going up against buzz saws. Randy, there's a guy that you that you used to love that didn't win his that struggled with his putter sometimes. Didn't win his first major until he was 34. No. All right. It's just not no. Feel like, a lot of other PGA Tour events. Yeah. First, <laughs> you know who Tommy? You think Ricky's going to win a major? Because that's who I see and feel when I see Tommy. I and don't. I don't think we don't mean this to be mean, TC. Like, I know. I like Tommy. Against, on I, I, no, no offense to anyone. Like I just, I, I don't. I just, I don't think I, Ricky wants feel... it like Tommy. Tommy fucking wants it, man, and he's putting in the work to do it and. I don't know, man. I just, I, I believe I have immense belief. I've, I've looked in his eyes. I fucking see it, guys. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go TC. I'm going to, like we said, we're going to kind of let you buy out of the Collins going to win eight here. <laughs> we're going to reset. We're going to reset the table. Okay. So we have like Keep a, that calendar invite though. Yeah, Sally. I got, don't, a, don't let them get rid of that. I, I legitimately did see that plan. calendar. Invite. <laughs> like, uh, the floor is yours, TC, on, on Colin. If you want to reset the table here. I think he wins four. I'm gonna cut it in half. I, two I th more. Still think he wins two more, just because there's fraudulent majors out there. Like Dottie called him out on it today. Oh, Put a bullet between his eyes. <laughs> Dottie was like, "Yeah, too. I mean, there were no fans at Harding Park, so that like that doesn't count at all." And then St. George <laughs> was, you know, I, I no missed the comment. No, she said, she said it was even worse than that. She was like, <laughs> you know. Uh, Collins, two major wins have something in common. Both COVID majors, no fans, and it was like, whoa! Just well, there, no, what I think she said too, like what Royal St. George, there was there was there fans, fans there, but it was very quiet. It was there limited. Many fans yeah, I think it was maybe fans, limited. All that. So, you know. Randy, where you, where do you stand on this? As you recently unloaded this from your portfolio, <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> I He's talking his I think, book. <laughs> I think Colin will get another one. I'll I'll I'll, I'll say three. I'm gonna say two. I think we're Ooh. done. Just for, Ooh, I like that. Dude. Just for fun. I, I don't know. You know, I TC. I didn't see it today. I just obviously we got the dog. You know, not all these the shoes. Not all these trends continue forever, right? Some guys just peak early, and I, I think you know you could say the same thing about Spieth. You could say the same thing about maybe even JT. There's, there's. Yeah, Colin seems like he he's got a higher floor. Ceiling's lower than those guys, but I think he's got a higher floor, and I think he's going to have longevity too. He's 27. Seems like his game's going to age with grace. Just, I think the iron play there. It's not like he's a bomber or anything like that. Um, I don't know. know. Three, yeah, and it three. just the most concerning thing today was Colin hitting a a cut off the tee on 
on 13. That that's generous like, to call that a cut. He can like be a he fucking had, he be was an adult it all day. It was very <laughs> poofy. The uh a few F15 balls in play wasn't wasn't not, wasn't not good. what we're about. Uh all right, last one I had. Well, I'll go I I oh, got to sorry, sorry, gotta, sorry. Yeah. Uh I'm going to say 3. I think because of the age and because of the experience. Like I I seems to be finding something. He's he's got game. I feel like he could win another PGA for sure. You know, just a like a dart fest. I feel like we need to have Scotty something wins all. where we <laughs> yeah. give out like every major from now, like through the next twenty five years, or 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 maybe through the next fifteen years, we just give out these majors, and and you can have a question mark next to them, but we kind of ascribe certain majors, and it's like there's like a running. Yeah, you got to fill out if he if he's gonna win that one, then that means someone else has exactly. to come off. I mean, that means Ludwig is an kind of what I'm starting to try to build. I said here. six. Yeah. I said six or more, Neil. Okay. I said why not twenty though? <laughs> but see, but why not thirty? Twenty, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyone else on Colin? You guys all weigh in on that one, right? All in. Uh, just, all right, last. Oh, can sorry. I just, you know, Colin's played 17 majors. He's got eight top tens, six top fives, and two wins. Like, I, I think great record. Pretty good. Yeah, it like he's he's good. But but the dog with the shoes. But the dog with but the, the little dog shoes. With the, shoes. the little dog with shoes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, last one. The main event. Does Rory ever win the Masters? Fuck no. <laughs> wow wow i'm no wow You're no. Yeah. i'm no i've been no for years all right god save these clips I'm i think yes. he does i think there's gonna be a rainy year and he's gonna come in and by the time everybody's completely written him off yes and he's gonna take it personally but man it was so disappointing to see him play the most artless golf this week it was just, disappointing it's just artless and and there's no there's no artistry. There's no touch. There's no. There's no joie de vivre in it. It's just, you know, trying to brutalize the golf course. Basically, that's an interesting take. I kind of want to go back now and look at like some of his early, early stuff. Like there must have been artistry at some point with Rory, right? Like I don't think it was always like force, force and hit it high and drop it in. And maybe it was, but like, I, what I was kind of thinking is almost like, is there is there almost like an aging Rory who has to find the fadeaway jumper? and and starts to embrace some of that stuff i don't know or does it, is it more of like a not saying faldo wasn't like that but like is it more of a faldo like you hit a point where it's like ah, i'm good man I'm, I'm what's good. uh what I'm rory's 34 something that sounds right okay so older than tommy he's in we're 10, we're 10 years without him winning a major for so sure like rory, I rory was that's the, the better question of like a different generation like is, is he gonna win any major uh, is Rory beating up on plumbers and firemen? I I think this week, like, yeah, it looked really bad. I think it all, I said it on Friday, I think it all stems from just really bad off the tee. And that's just, if, if Rory just isn't, is it good, he's not going to play good with that. Like, it all stems from his driver, which is tough. That's not, that's not a good thing. And that's, you know, I'm kind of making the case against him a little bit. But I think this year was a bit of an outlier. I think he wins one. I, I think he wins the Masters. I think he wins the Masters. On the record. Wins. Put it put it down, Cody. I think he wins the fucking Masters. <laughs> he turns 35 next month. So. Guys, I got one more to add. Well, I'm hold on. I'll, right. I'll, ugh, God, I'm right on the edge on this one, too. I'm going to say... Just ran a poll on uh, YouTube, by the way. DJ, giving you a little bit of time here. 71% sure. no. And we're wow. we're looking at quite a few votes here. Which is what we need. Or he needs a chip yeah. on his shoulder. That's that exactly what say, we need. In that case, I'll say yes. For that reason, I'll say but, yes. So, Neil, what's he waiting for? Like, what, what kind uh, of chip does he not need? Chip, the chip's not big enough yet. No, yeah. No, oh, I think we're holding. Uh, I don't know. He's got to, yeah, he's got to get out of his own way. But listen, I can't, he's on his own journey, Randy. Okay. I can't, I can't. Neil, Neil, do you want to apologize for the block party? Are we going to keep doing that charade every year? <laughs> Major. See, God, the uh, no fun neighbor down the street. Oh, we're gonna do that, guys. Huh? We're not gonna, you're not gonna pay. You, what about the HOA, guys? Huh? We should have a new process. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna need to get more that color. Can we? Can we go back? Is it just shout out 2019 Port Rush, Randy, for for the uh, for, for the call of killing of killing Rory? No, that looks Thank pretty you. prescient right now. One of the I, one of the best ever. I think a better question is: Does Rory win another major? I do too. And I don't, I'm not prepared to answer that tonight. I'm going to need some time with that one. Okay. 
think yes, 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 he I, wins another Masters, and yes, he wins another major I, beyond the Masters, I think. TC, what was the other one you wanted to add? I wanted to say, does is there a world in which the cat wins another major? No. 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 Yeah, actually, my father-in-law today, I was watching a little bit with him. He was like, yeah, you're going to have to redo that that Tiger take about him winning another major. Because I told him that like two weeks ago. He's like, what do you think? I was like, oh, well, he gets around Augusta really well. Like, he could probably steal another one. Nah, nah. He was like clowning me for that. He's like, look, he's in last place, man. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even watch golf. He's like, guy stinks. I'm like, yeah. Wait, Neil, don't you guys, do this for a living? Guys, I, guess, I disagree. He's like, well, what was that thing you said about Tiger winning another major? He's in last. It's like, damn. Baby I brain. Hold. I disagree. I think he, uh, you know, granted, didn't weekend didn't go like he planned. He wanted to. Doesn't seem like the the uh, fused ankles degenerative anymore. Like I feel like it's not going to get any worse than it has. This is a big walk. I don't think it's going to be another Masters, but I think I think at some point he he contends in and wins a British Open. I think, uh, think weather is going to cooperate. We, like bad. The, the, everyone, no. Everybody, pause. Let's just pause. Let's go back to the first thirty minutes of this episode. Let's remember the era we're in. Uh, I Tiger's totally not beating, I, Tiger's fucking not being solid. I, I totally get that, but also like I think sometimes if you get one where you get <laughs> it. Yeah, I mean fucking Tom Watson. You look at like Jose Maria Olathabo almost quit the game before his second masters and he he made the cut this week and beat uh who did he beat this week? They though, all of them combined have zero fused body parts. Tiger has like is I totally get it, but also like Tiger's the greatest golfer to ever live. Like I think there's some there's some guile and some some something there. I mean Jose Maria Olathabo tied with Brooks Kepka, the reigning PGA champ, Sahith, and John Rahm. You're, you're, you're falling apart here. You yeah, Jose Maria beat Johnson. Tiger this week. That that's no, I I, I get that, but I just think I, I think Tiger can build up to stuff. I think he's God. he's adjusting to this new body that he's got. I think at some point in the next five to ten years, Tiger. I'm not saying he's going to compete at majors consistently. I'm saying at some point down the line, he will contend and I think win a British Open that is firm, fast, dried out like Hoy Lake, or if they go back to Lytham or something like that. Okay. This is gonna be so tough. Tell- if this go happens- to Lewis, someone call Surf Pro. <laughs> if, if this happens, this is gonna be Ludwig times twenty five. Yeah, I, I will. That's I mean, I I, I'm already the first regretting. One. I, I predicted I just, 2019. I just don't like being out of this on uh, against the uh, against. Andy TC owes me a thousand bucks. I, t- t- I think you're, <laughs> I have you're no talking, recollection of that. You're talking <laughs> down the line. I think we're at kind of at the we're, end of the line. We're pretty down the far like, down the line. I don't think there is more a lot more line left. Is the problem? I mean, b- third leg, Greg. Tom Watson. Uh, let me There's put it this way, though. I think this this no, year no, for one. for Rory and for Tiger, <laughs> the course was playing like so. It was first off. I didn't get to say this earlier. The course was like the MVP for me this week. Watching Augusta play hard is awesome, and I and that's but that does not set up for Rory, which is which is a knock on him, right? Like we need something wet and like, just like how damning soggy. is that? I was yeah, just gonna bad. say that's no, it so is, incriminating, but. but that doesn't mean we're not going to get one of those in the next five to ten years. Exactly. And so well, I don't think Tiger's going to win that one. I think Rory's going to win that one. All right. Well, this was no, this t- was no Tiger. The last thing Tiger needs is is a soft, wet one. I'm saying Tiger needs perfect conditions in the British Open. But let's say at the old course in, you know, ten years or something like that, or nine <sighs> 10 years. years like, TC, I don't think he's playing in ten years. That's the thing. I think he's 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 just going to be like, nah, I'm good. Uh, I don't. I don't think he has anything else, Neil. He's got Charlie. He's got his kids. He's got Charlie's career, and he's got he's got we, his he's his competitive guys, fire. And we know just, anyway, the, the blockbuster movie industry is falling apart too. We Out, outside of this tournament, TC, I, I could ride with you a little bit there. Outside of this tournament, he's going to run out of 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 entries. He's not. This is this just isn't going to happen, guys. I totally I get what I just figured British. out what's happening. I yeah. just figured out what's happening. TC has his own major system. Here, like, there's Africa's major. Oh, that's you know, crazy. there's like the Dubai oh. Invitational. Like, he has TGL. all these. We don't even know it's about the, the pure TGL. insurance <laughs> championship. <laughs> and he might win a simmed major. Now that's interesting. <laughs> Trophy is on too. Like that. That is the way that starts. To, these numbers start to add up. All right. This, this I, was this was productive. I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Just really quick. Uh, our uh, our pro golf fantasy draft that me, Neil, and and TC did. Um, 
TC lets Scotty Scheffler go by with the first pick, and there's eight I points feel, available. I feel okay about it, man. I'm taking the long view. I will I say you each he... you each got two points this week for uh, top fives for guys that you drafted. Um, uh, TC had uh, Ludwig Aubert and uh, Tommy Fleetwood, and Neil had Colin Morikawa and Max Homa. So you each got two points, and I got eight for Scotty winning. I'm leading twelve to two to two uh, so far in our six year draft. Hell yeah! Uh, wait, 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 I. All right, so how many points did you get for players? Uh, I got two points for players, right? And then you got how many for Masters? Six? Eight. You got eight for the Masters. You get yes. eight for a major win? Correct. That's a lot. We we're, went, yeah, we went through. We're going to take any any further points auditing offline. Uh, <laughs> Neil, thank you for hopping in. Let you go get back to, uh, I don't know, what, bedtime? Kids got to be in no, bed, but, bed already. Hey, Cub, I'll have to strap him into the carrier and walk around the neighborhood for a little bit. Sure. So. Peace. God, Godspeed. Thanks for popping Somewhere in. Yeah. See ya. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's get into some of our final segments. We're gonna land the plane here. Uh, first things first. We're gonna get to our Surf Pro Mulligan. I feel like over the next couple of years, we're gonna have a, a couple more things to clean up from the last ten minutes of the show there. But uh, in golf, when bad shots happen, there's a Mulligan ball. When fire, water, or other damage happens, there is Serve Pro. Thankfully, the pros at Serve Pro know how to make any mess both on and off the course. Solly, like it never even happened. Of course. Uh, thank you to Serve Pro for our new segment, The Mulligan. Uh, Serve Pro, the number one choice in cleanup and restoration. And they do construction too, Randy, in case you're you know doing any construction around the neighborhood. Serve Pro has 50 years of experience helping people recover from disasters. Serve Pro is here to help 24 7. Just call 1 800 Serve Pro. They specialize in cleaning and restoration due to floods, storms, fires, mold, and more. I would love to know what else is in the and more. There's mm. got to be some other some other crazy circumstances they found, I'm sure. Serve Pro, number one choice in cleanup and restoration. It's like my uh, Morikawa thing. I think I have asbestos. <laughs> exactly right. It's just, it's taking over the whole house. <laughs> and then some birds got in and they then they dragged it all over the place. Uh, visit servepro.com or call 1-800-SERVE-PRO today. So guys, this is simple. Let's just hear a take from Masters Week that you are you desperately want to apologize for. Randy, I'm going to start with you. What where did you where did you really miss the mark here, my man? I got too cute pre pre Masters. I, I wanted to take Hideki. I, you know, I was trying to zig. Everybody's taking Scotty. I, you know, like what are you doing? I, I got to be better than that. Hideki didn't show anything. Should have taken Scotty. That's that's big of you to admit. Solly. Uh, I, I regret that um, when I when I called this in, I used an old timey reporter voice and it sounded like I was joking when I really wasn't. When I said uh, after Scotty birdied the second hole on Thursday that he was going to win by four. Uh, I, I wish I didn't do that in a funny voice because uh, that's literally I think I, I said uh, I wrote down if I could bet Scotty to win by four or more, I would do it right now. Um, no, I'm, I'm joking. That's not a mulligan. Uh, I, I Corey Connors, I fell in love with and Russell Henley. I don't really know where I was going with that. Uh, they didn't really know where they were going. Okay. Zalatoris was going to be in this bunch, being a nice round today to uh, end up with a, a non-competitive wiki yellow. Also, I said Cantlay was going to go get that yellow. He he finished the last yeah, four holes, three over. That that was a good play. I don't regret that one, but yeah. I, that was. No, yeah. I apologize. No, I think that was a great play. I apologize. I, I, I'm pissed off at, at, at no hat Pat. I'm <laughs> mad as hell. <laughs> uh, Solly, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you on on some of the Scotty stuff. I believe if it, maybe it was the. Uh, Bay Hill uh, podcast. I would I would encourage everybody to go down, catch the last four seconds of audio there when I scream, Scotty's going to win the players and the masters. And then I just, Cody, you got me all whipped up last night with Max's presser and I backed off my take. I did not trust my process. It was like getting to 13 and, and hitting a three wood instead of just, you know, really like sticking to my game plan. I, that metaphor didn't make any sense. Uh, but I, I should have stuck with the Scotty thing last night. I've been on it for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I just I chickened out. And I would also, TC, I'll jump on the Eckerot grenade. I don't know why I was so high on Austin Eckerot. Probably because you <laughs> really good. You got me really all good. frothed up about that one. Like, oh, this guy's going to, he could be a contender this week. And he just completely filled his pants. So I, I would like to apologize for that one too. Tron, what what do you got? I hope I didn't. Yeah, no, I I'm, I'm gonna call him uh, we we culpas instead of, instead of me a culpas, right? Because little guys, you know everybody. No, no, I'm saying it's a it's a team. Oh, effort, I, right? okay, it's kind of, sure. you guys are responsible -E -E. here as well. Yeah, kind of you know taking after Ludwig was saying a lot of we afterwards today, trying to trying to bring that into my own life. First of all, I want to apologize for for Sahith. Um, T45, that's not going to get it done. 74, 74, 75. Like, that sucks. That sucks. <laughs> Didn't make a lot of birdies. Just, 
yeah, I don't know. Um, I got to go back to the well on that one a little bit. Uh, I got to put my put my cliques hat on. And just apologize for Adrian Moronk. Yeah. Uh, bad. Really, really <laughs> bad. And uh, somebody came up with a an idea that possibly the live teams, <clears throat> if your captain has an exemption, like you should be able to pass that around your team. So I think Blandy should should be able to get into the Masters next that's year. That's a sick block. I like right? that. Yeah, so, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so I got that. And then uh, lastly, I want to apologize for saying that Scotty winning would be the worst thing to happen to golf. Oh. <laughs> so anyway. I have to check the record. You might have apologized for that already. I think uh, I may. Yeah. <laughs> He's really but sorry. I honestly does deserve two apologies. So uh, th thank you to Serve Pro. That is the, the Mulligan segment, Serve Pro. The number one choice in cleanup and restoration, servepro.com, 1-800-SERVE. Pro, uh, guys, where should we go next? We can go to we can get our coldest moment segment. We can go back to the the go back and watch this shot. TC, should we do that? We had a, we had a couple yeah. of shots that we dredged up. Of course, the Masters website is great for actually posting every shot of the week. You can go back and click into people's scorecards and and look. And if you were not paying like psychotically close attention to this tournament, you probably missed some stuff. Uh, so Randy, I'm going to throw it to you first. A couple shots that I know you wanted to shout out. Yeah. Where else to start? But my guy, Ryan Fox, I believe oh, this was Foxy. round two. Ooh. Uh, his approach shot into 11 was so grimy and, uh, not, not quite the result he needed. It wasn't good, but it was gross. Oh no, it was fabulous. It was fabulous. I, I challenge everybody to go back and watch it. Watch the trajectory. It just land. It, it just is too hot, and it rolls through the green <laughs> over the back of eleven. But it, it was probably the best shot shape I saw all week. Trajectory okay. Foxy rules. Yeah, I, I think I'm. I'm going to declare TC. You you urged me in a in a private message this week. Hey, I think you need to be a Foxy guy. He's about everything that we like. You know, he he's supposed to be the he's best a guy, sportsman. Best everybody, guy I've never world. heard a bad word about him. Everybody's and like, you know what? I think I'm bloke. I'm going to be. This I'm guy's be a Foxy four hundred. He's going pin hunting with like yeah. a little low <laughs> stinger into eleven on Friday. Yeah. That's Consider so me officially sick. Team Foxy. I don't care if that pisses Sully off or not. I know Sully hates Foxy. <laughs> don't do this. Don't uh, do this. All right, Randy. Not, what, not you, Deach. What, what's your second one? Uh, my second one, we don't have to spend much time. I, I thought Nicholas Hoygaard's uh, tee shot into six yesterday. Oh. Um, mm. One of the better ones I saw, that, that pin on the back left shelf, damn near made it. I, it did not make the birdie putt, so that's even more fun. But just uh, the unstable compound, and I thought that was – Probably one of his better shots all week. Hoygaard's like Jamarcus Russell. Like he's got these <laughs> these traits, these tools that you just can't teach. You just you gotta we gotta fill in some of the some of the gaps and work on some of the fundamentals. I think. I think that's all right. right. All right, Randall, bring us home. Last one. Uh, Mickelson TC. Big props to you and Jeff Shackelford for calling this one out. Uh, Mickelson on nine T yesterday. <laughs> Uh, intentionally driving it to one fairway. I think Shackelford said, you know, maybe it gives you like a slightly, slightly <laughs> better angle into nine. He's like a perfect play for somebody bored on the weekend. And uh, I thought that was just a perfect encapsulation of it. Well, well yet said. another uh, nobody yeah. Phil move. That's yes. exactly right. Uh, all right, TC, what stood out to you? Yeah, I got, uh, I got Hovland's round two performance on number two oh. hit it hit it in the over in the hertz counter this is you know while the while the oj news is is very fresh i thought it was an awesome awesome uh tribute there and then uh like off the tee he's just like very like holy shit <laughs> like, just like jesus like that was so far left and then the very next shot he he <laughs> just just punching out after he takes an unplayable and punches the guys the just shattered yeah. and it's you know i felt bad but i got full confidence that my guy vic i think you know i think he's going through it right now but i have full confidence that he is going to re-emerge stronger than ever and he's going to start picking some of these things off and challenging scotty for some of this stuff so like i mean my dream is like vic and ludwig going at it in a battle royale <laughs> that would be fucking awesome that would be so, great. Next up, uh, I got Ludwig, round one, second shot into 14. 
misses, you know, hits there, looks like it's going to bound forward, catches a little slope and, and hops off the front, ends up making bogey there. And then very next hole, uh, makes double on, um, on 15. And I think he learned from both of those today for the final round. And I think that I just wanted to call this out because I think Ludwig is going to be extremely, extremely quick learner and he's going to internalize all this stuff and come back next year and he's going to know exactly where to hit it on these holes. So, and probably on a softer golf course as well, which should yeah. terrify everybody. Um, <laughs> I got Harmon round one, second shot into, uh, 18. into 18. I would encourage everybody to please go watch this just for the audio. I, I don't think I've heard a ball hit a tree that squarely <laughs> in a long time. It was really, really, really impressive. So, uh, good stuff. Mine are, mine are a little more, you, you may have saw these if you were watching the shows all week, but in case you were not, I, 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 I urge you, I yearn for you to go watch JT's, uh, layup on 15 in round two. Uh, <laughs> he was behind the trees left, could not get to the green and was just laying up and hit this like weird snap hook layup shot that again, saw like kind of a no one jt situation like just hit a wedge over the like trees arnold palmer just, finished to it this is like yeah. this is not nobody's asking for this thing probably snapped like a hundred feet left more or more like just crazy shape on this layup shot and it runs all the way through into the water just on un- that was kind of the 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 highlight or tc as as you said there was maybe many highlights of his yeah, last well, six yeah. holes five holes I would say go go watch all of that. Like that that last four holes, I've watched it like ten times, <laughs> and it's really like it's it's he misses a putt on that one, he misses a putt on sixteen. Like he he put it in the fucked spot in the bunker, three putts then to, to make double on sixteen, misses what was like a really good putt on seventeen, and then misses a short putt on eighteen too. And you can just slowly like see see his his soul leaving his body. Like he's trying his hardest not to. He's catching lips. He's pissed off he's trying so hard to just hold it together and not break his putter over his knee it was awesome uh my second one came from from our our champion this was Sala. you and i shouted this one out on friday his second shot into number three when the wind was absolutely howling right into his face he's got this one where he's got to clear the bunker lip from the fairway bunker on three he's got to hit it high enough to get it out of there but he can't hit it hard enough to put too much spin on it. Or it's going to suck off the front like it did for Sahith. And he just hits like, it, again, it, it looks kind of boring, maybe, unless you're thinking about all the factors that go into it. But the way, the, like how easy he makes this shot look from like 90 yards is why he won the tournament by four. He's he's so freaking good at stuff like this. Uh, and then the last one was from the pro. Uh, maybe the shot of the week, honestly. The, uh, the seven wood that he hit into number four uh on friday again wind pounding everybody playing for that short left spot for the easy chip and max just hits like this carvey seven wood in there that it just it, it bears repeating randy i mean you gotta you gotta go watch that give that one another watch that that was that was well worthwhile DJ, it was an homage to the uh seven wood i hit on eight on it was old i think <laughs> i think he said that in the in the post round i i agree uh all right guys couple more things to get to we've got our yeti coldest moment of the week comes to speaking of scotland tc uh yeti we did it just did a big project for them uh in scotland we're gonna have some really really good video stuff coming out later this year uh from playing the old course in reverse that was all made possible thanks to our friends at yeti uh so this was a segment i neil's neil's always uh championing championing this segment the coldest moment of the week and i'm gonna kick this one off guys this was a hot button issue i know but i think the coldest moment of the week has to be what turned out to be Augusta National asking Jason Day to take off the Melbon vest. Uh, I think that is cold blooded. I think, especially for a fashion appreciator like me, uh, you know, it's something you hate to see. Jordan won't go public with this take. She's hanging me out to dry, but she liked the vest a lot. Our friend Patty, who, who you know, who edits our videos, he likes the vest. He said, quote, Augusta does not know drip, which I support wholeheartedly. And I just, I can't sleep on this. I hate seeing you guys on the wrong side of history here. Uh, and just uh, that, that was my coldest moment of the week. And I, it's shame on the green jackets for, for making them put this one back in the closet. We could double, I think the the, green... you could double this over for your mea culpa. Just <laughs> <laughs> replay this for surf. That's right, it's a closed loop system. Deej, I do think if the green jackets are going to request that he take that off, 
I think that they need to remove the pimento and skip it hats from the pro shop. God, couldn't have said it better myself. Those are so unbecoming. I saw Hell a yeah. patron hat Ugh. in the same in the same mold. <laughs> I got you one, Randy. Oh, oh. gross. <laughs> That's what I got. What, uh, Solly, where are you going? It's, do me last. I've, I think I, I think uh, okay. I'm going to be stealing somebody's from what I could tell from the images. But. Randall. Yeah, I I emptied the the clip earlier in the show, but I I I read that Justin Ray stat about Scotty having three wins this year and zero rounds over par, and I it just like knocked me dead in my tracks. Like that is ice cold, baby. That is yeah, that's that's a hostile hostile stat. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, man, chill out. <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to have fun. Uh, TC, where are you going? Yeah, I'll be quick. I think it's. It's uh, it's Scotty getting it up and down on eighteen for good measure. Yeah, Just like didn't yeah, I like that. Didn't have to, <laughs> didn't need to. Don't cost just, nothing. I'm just gonna yeah, do it. You know what? Like, yeah, I'm just gonna remind you how much better I am than all of you. So, uh, I will go with um, Tiger Woods walking off the 18th green today. Uh, I was left with the feeling. Uh, I think I said this to you guys in our Slack. Was like. I, I just don't know how long he's going to do this. It did not look like he was having fun. Um, if you remember, uh, what was it 2021? Uh, what was the first year back after the injury? I forget what year it was. 2022. Sorry. Um, how he had finished like T47. And he was walking off beaming and like the cameras followed him. And it was like, holy shit, he finished the tournament, all that. There was none of that today. I watched him walk off 18 green, just completely stone faced, no smiles, no acknowledgement of anyone uh, on the way. And, if that's going to be kind of the result of your tournament, I just I wonder, you know, how how long he's going to do this. That was the feeling I had, and that was just a, that was a that was a cold moment. Um, I don't know if that's the the using the proper uh, idea with the game, but that's that was that just felt cold to me. So it's a loosely defined game. I think that's you can I make it truly fine. anything. Yeah, I think that's right. Shout out to our friends at Yeti. Thank you again for for all the support. I, I I'm just going to shout out the the Yeti uh, Yonder bottle. It's like the perfect golf golf bag bottle light. So it is yeah. very light and it's just it's good stuff uh come on right here dude you feel me uh a couple a couple quick news and notes uh Saul, you mentioned the um tiger you know just kind of experience there was a, a weird thing I, I don't know if we got to the bottom of this at all but the the exchange between him and neil shipley tc did you did you see any of this did you see any your happened? sources saying TC? yeah i did I've, I've reached out to some of my sources we're trying to very very weird uh interaction I'm, i think it was on four or five uh and then eight you know, i, I guess, believe actually on, oh eight okay yeah. and then yeah like tiger wrote something down and then handed a note allegedly. to allegedly allegedly um you know, which was refuted by Shipley. He was asked about it after the round. He it looked like he had seen a ghost, and then he he kind of looks over at the green jacket up there, and he's like, "No, no, that that absolutely did not happen." Like it, <laughs> and then he looks back over, and and question gets asked again, and then he looks back over the green jacket. And he, no, no, that 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 did not happen. I don't know what you're talking about. He didn't send me a note. Did anyone, anybody actually see this? Is there a video of it? Or it was like just a reporter going rogue asking, like, was, was, was there a report. confused reporter? It, it may have been. The reporter, I believe, like, he, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, like, hey, I, I watched on eight, like, Tiger wrote something down and then handed it to you. Like, what, what was that all about? And then he kind of <laughs> gave that look that Cody just put on the screen to to the the green jacket that was running the press conference and goes, uh, no, that that didn't happen. No, I don't know what you're talking about. That's he goes really like I saw him hand you something. He's like, no, that didn't happen. So listen, maybe something, probably almost positively nothing, but just a funny, uh, funny yeah. exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, that Shipley faces like when the edibles hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Speaking of when the edibles hit, just a lot of fun. Uh, there was a lot of fun memes going around about our next topic, which is which is the Vern goodbye. There was like the sweetest photo ever of of the the hand coming out of the tree. Uh, you know, <laughs> Vern was camped out behind six <laughs> behind sixteen. Uh, you know, waiting to say goodbye to uh, to Tiger as he as he finishes round. Very 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 sweet moment. But of course, the internet had all kinds of photos of Tiger shaking hands with this tree. And there was like me when I recycle and, you know, all, all kinds of like all kinds of funny stuff. But uh, TC, I know Vern's your guy. How, how are you feeling today? How was the how was the send off? Uh, they didn't give him much to work with. You know, he didn't really. It was kind of a 
you know, not a lot happened on 16 there. Things were kind of done and dusted. Little audio issue there when he was kind of saying his last words. Couldn't really hear him. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think Vern, Vern will be remembered for, you know, everything. Like I thought Nance said something nice. He was just like, hey, Vern, like all these people could very well be clapping for you and standing up for you. I think he's not only like golf, but just from an SEC football perspective, like as someone who waited until 3.30 for the CBS SEC game to come on every Saturday and Vern to just, you know, kind of open that up and really it just it just made you feel something, right? And I think there's something, not a lot of things in the world that like make me feel something indelible and lasting and all that. And Vern, every time I heard his voice, brought me back to man like something something interesting could happen here and uh even the stuff that he, like in his later years the last few years that he 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 you know little faux pas here and there they were all funny and additive and and lighthearted. This and is mike wallace yeah, like, <laughs> i don't know man i just i love Vern. he's he's the best of you know the best of golf the best of sports broadcasting and it was never about Vern. it was about what was happening on the screen there and and uh you know, sad to see him go. Who, uh, the question for the group, who, who should get the chair? Who are they going to replace him with? That's I got, I got question. a nomination if you guys are, are taking him, but please, please. I think our girl Iona. Oh, I love Would that. be epic, man. Start a, start, she's young. She's got a great voice, great, like sharp about the game. No, good. You know, just good eye for everything. Like, I think she would be awesome for the next, you know, Start another like big great accent 50 yeah. year run here, right? With someone yeah. with someone young. That. I think that would be phenomenal. That's great. Just an out of left field idea. I'd love to get bones involved in the CBS side. Yeah. It's a good idea. He's got an NBC relationship, but I'd I'd like to come him to come over to the the good side. <laughs> come to death row. <laughs> uh I think that's I'd say, you know, great. I think I think Jack Collinsworth. Sure. I think uh <laughs> Jason Garrett. <laughs> yeah. Again, the same CBS NBC issues. Tony, Tony yeah. Dungy. Yeah. <laughs> Do my guy. Yeah. Who, who else? Yeah. Oh, that would got me good. Brandon, maybe your guy, Tom Brenneman. I think, Tom, I think he's still he's yeah. a free agent. Exactly. Oh, oh I mean, we've been the right bunker. Uh, Mark yeah. Jackson. Uh, all right, listen. The, the laughs are starting to are starting to roll here. Which Cody, I think it's perfect time. Uh, oh, no. We we heard from our guy. Our guy Charles Van Kirk, you might know him from the uh, from the Big Cans remix. <laughs> uh, unsolicited, he was he was very taken by some of the audio from from the pros presser last night. I was hoping to play this in victory. I was hoping maybe you know we even get Max on the show wearing the green jacket tonight, and we play this. But uh, I think it's going to be helpful and handy going forward either way. So uh, you know, Cody. Without further ado, let, let's let's get to the the latest cut from our guy Charles Van Kirk. I remind myself I'm a dog, I'm a dog, I'm a dog, I'm a dog. I'm a dog, I'm a dog. Hello, friends. The pro! <laughs> Golf's rightful king. I'm a dog, dog. Tradition unlike any other. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Golf's rightful <laughs> king. God, I legs Dang. banged with Max in here wearing a green jacket. Oh my I know. god! I know. Again, listen, we we have it now. It's in the arsenal, and if you know, next time Max wins, I think we, you know, we might have to lead the show with that one. But hey, uh, before we get too far down here and get into silliness, I think we have so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Hold on. Let me turn down the I'm a dog <laughs> remix. Go ahead, TC. Uh, Cam, I want to call out Cam. Speaking of, I dog. thought he was going to make a run today. Uh, he had the eagle on two. Did not make a birdie or an eagle the rest of the day. Hmm. Um, but you know, good finish for Cam. I don't think anybody was expecting him to kind of punch above uh, T six along with Deschambeau. I, I do want to apologize. Like I, I'm, I'm good on Deschambeau now for like the rest of the year. Like I, it's, it could be like a once or twice a year thing, right? Ate too, ate too much cake. <laughs> exactly. God, I want a piece of cake. Oh God, why do I eat all that cake? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, what else? Hatton, uh, that could be a big T9 to get him in here next year. For sure. Um, 
I think the other camp, top, yeah. the other top twelve and ties guys. I think uh, Hatton, Pavon, your boy Shank. I believe Absolutely. you were actually were on that one, TC. I was, and, uh, and Cam yeah. Davis all kind of seem like the relevant, you know, top twelve and ties yeah. getting back into next year, guys. Um, P played well, like you foretold, Randy. You were you were high on P. Uh, yeah, Cam Young. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I I thought P had a top ten in him today. I, I was disappointed he didn't get into red numbers. And yeah. also, I think he was the only former champion. I can't remember seeing a single shot of P. You know, they were showing like mm. every single former champion, but and big not tone. P. <laughs> and big tone. And future champion. <laughs> uh, I think so. Sep, good good finish. Chris Kirk, good finish there. Wanted to call that out. Uh, Lucas Glover, I kind of caught some flack earlier in the week for saying he was going to play well, but I think Lucas Glover... Horse for a lot more courses now with the pipe. I think I think, people, I think people said, "Oh, actually, you know what, TC? That's from, from, from who? Oh, yeah. people were sh- many people were shitting. No, I don't. People knocking on your door, TC. Uh, Waco, that that that's that round two seventy eight was bad. That, that got to do more with that 70, 78, 71, 73. You got to do more if you're if you're groveling to get into these majors. You know, <laughs> uh, Sally, you mentioned earlier, can't lay, can't have that seventy six on Sunday. Got beat by. Young Tom Kim by by ten shots. Uh, Tom Kim shoots sixty six to finish t thirty. Uh, my guy JT posted made the cut. Most underrated player in the world right now, tied with with uh, medium dick Rick. Akshay battled through that pickleball injury. T thirty five. What else I got? That's all I got. Country right. music sensation Eric Cole made the cut in his first Masters. Shot eighty one in round three. Came back today for a seventy three. There you go. VJ made the cut and his his uh, hokas. TC, you said that's all I got. Yeah. You, oh, I you, you signed off. You did. Big it. Nap okay. made the cut. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to lift some of these young guys up. We're trying. Like VJ, we need, they're, yeah, they're we need. next to their radio. Just <laughs> oh, please, <laughs> please let me get a shot from TC. Please, TC. Uh, all right, we're, we're we're officially we've got the landing gear down here, which means it's time to go through our our last two menus. Cody, I'm going to let you introduce uh, KVV's menu. I know you, you know you had some strong words, strong words for him in the uh, in the team Slack uh, this week. But we're going to go through KVV and TC. So, Cody, you want to go through uh, Kev's? Yes, I will. This is uh, of course served in honor of Mr. Kevin Van Valkenburg. We're going to lead here with some hot pepper cheese sliders, courtesy of the Missoula Club in Missoula, Montana. Or this is Kevin where style. this is where I. <laughs> immediately uh i think we talked about rocky mountain oysters the other day and I th- i'm pretty sure that kev admitted that he's never had them in his entire life but really? he's going to feed rocky mountain oysters to the the rest of I the guests at his uh championship dinner and then of course he's For gonna those have don't know of course are testicles bull, bull testicles bull yeah testicles. theoretically not a bull yet okay. steer testicles <laughs> sure uh, if you're trying to wolf down some bull testicles, you might, might need a fork and a knife or something like that, TC. I'm just looking out for you. Uh, the oysters look uh, amazing, courtesy of Rolling Road Country Club. I'm sure KVV put this in here because he's trying to look for a discount on his membership or something like that because nobody else has done this yet. Uh, we're going to go a salad option. I know, Solly, you're out here. Pickled beet and bib lettuce. I'm a big fan of oh, beet lettuce. lettuce. Mike um, baby. Goat cheese, pine nuts, and champagne dressing. Hell yeah. Main course, torch sear prime rib with some, no, some creamy you. horseradish sauce and some let's they, unless they have some medium well end. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm I'm guessing that this has to be uh and then just crab cakes. No, Fadley's crab cakes. Okay, there we go. Specifically, thank yeah. you. I can't read it. It's kind of kind of uh lower there. And then massive, some- massive fan. Parsnips. Uh, I'm a big fan These of these are parsnips. Parsnips are underrated for sure. Yeah. Oregano, red pepper flakes on there. And then I absolutely love this. A big old ice cream cookie sandwich, uh, from big dipper ice cream, Missoula. It's fabulous. I go there every single time. Uh, the ice cream co- or the cookies are of course provided by his grandma, Betty. And, uh, yeah, I guess he's no only wines. no wines, but he's only giving us the mocha chip ice cream. Uh, and the banana oatmeal cookies, so limiting there. Uh, again, this is not my menu. Mine was Thursday. Sure. You can go back and find it. But KVV, uh, those are what I, I pointed out. No for. wine. And when he plays this to the club's general manager, no discount. 
you're out. <laughs> and it looks like it's going to be old fashions and white Russians to drink, which is mm. which is hefty. You got to pace yourself with those. A lot of cream going on in that. Belly. I, know. I don't That's know how I'm worried about process. All I don't, I, you might need to sit the, the part three contest out. The next yeah, day. Uh, Neil's got that 20 minute countdown. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's get move this one up. <laughs> exactly. All right. It, it's time for the main event. TC, this is the whole the whole. It's all been leading to this. Talk about just like coming into the week as the favorite and needing to still go out and hang up a number. TC was yeah. shitting all over all kinds of hypothetical menus. He called this exercise, quote, the hardest thing I've done this year. Uh, so, I mean, the, the time is now to, to unveil what you've come up with. Yes. Uh, Sarge, without further ado, please. So, oh my God. Uh, oh my God. 600 words. Yeah, we're grazing to begin with here. I uh, Just a few notes. I wanted to, you know, I thought about hitting him with some foie gras. I thought about hitting him with some ceviche. That didn't feel like I was going to get canceled for the foie. Of course. The ceviche yeah. doesn't feel right in Augusta. Then you got to put Pisco sours and margaritas on as well. I, I thought about a beef stroganoff, just comfort, <laughs> okay, you know, okay. like elevating the hell out of comfort food, but. So without further ado, we're going just a lot of different little apps, little, little, uh, a moose boosh here. We're doing tomato gazpacho shooters. We're doing mini BLTs with like Benton's bacon and awesome lettuce and, and some of the best bread you've ever had. We're doing Kobe beef skewers with an apois dipping sauce, we're doing American oysters, probably some Kumamoto's, some well fleets from the East coast, all the fixings with that we're doing grilled artichokes. Doing Florida stone crab with a cognac mustard sauce. Doing smashed cucumbers with chili crunch. Shout out to my guy Mick Flamingo here in Jack's. That does those are those. so good. Mm. Uh, toast scoggin, which is like a, a dill shrimp uh, toast. That's uh, shout out to uh, our relatives in Sweden. And then a spring a asparagus soup. Inclusive, inclusive yeah. grazing here. Chilled sautéed uh, Galician razor clams. Uh, on top of that as well i thought about doing you know something from everybody from all the previous winners their country but then i realized sergio did that when he won and that would i don't want to be an asshole so sure. um next up we got the palate cleanser just a little little uh palate cleanser across the little uh seasonal sorbet uh, i would recommend the melon personally uh and then uh, chef recommends the melon <laughs> uh a suma she drew, drew it's basically a, a dashi broth okay. uh that you know will kind of give you some umami heading into that we're gonna go kind of a primi uh secondi uh you know italian coursing here uh primi we're gonna go with a risotto of maitake uh we've got some early season uh matsutake mushrooms uh as well as some maitake mushrooms there's a place in kansas city uh can't remember the name of it that I, I ate with ben had the best maitake mushroom i've ever had this brown butter and sage sauce so we're gonna you know kind of channel that a little bit and then this i came up with this in my mind today i love potato latkes but we're gonna take them to another level we're gonna put duck confit on top of the the uh the uh, latkes with some roasted cabbage and, and preserved pear okay uh, some sweetness to cut through some from, of the uh in the twisted mind yeah yeah and then second i went all over the place with this beef tartare is fucking sick guys i've i love beef Straight tartare up. i love going to french restaurants uh you know <laughs> you get some good mustard in there you get some cake heavy on the capers heavy on the on the uh the uh, mustard sauce so, Big sorry quail egg guys i gotta put this what? comment up is that a waiver at the bottom of the menu <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. I mean, right, you know, we're doing we're doing beef tartare. It's a simple I'm worried about the quail egg in there. It's a tiny ass little egg. You need a you need some <laughs> no, more. I'm doing multiple and also I would eggs. say if you have two au pois, if you have two au pois, do you have one? Also? No, this Good is point. the same, this is the same sauce. We're we're being okay. sustainable. And we've got freedom frites. Okay. <laughs> freedom frites. I like I like frites, but you know, obviously can't get down with the French, so we gotta go freedom frites. Okay. Uh, and then we're doing a veal piccata. You love going I, to French restaurants. <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, I love veal. I love veal. I, you know, I love veal. I thought about a marsala or a salt and boca. We're going to go with the piccata just because we've got a bunch of heavy stuff there, especially up top. Uh, for sides, we're going sauteed bok choy, scalloped potatoes, hash brown casserole, chilled asparagus and mint salad, beef, and then just big beefsteak tomatoes. Pretty simple. <laughs> 
uh some some of that roaring 40s blue from the king island dairy oh god that uh, oh, cheese shop that uh just some simple olive oil balsamic vinegar salt and pepper dessert we're going with a big ass cheese spread <laughs> uh you know i got i got you know barely buzzed from cowgirl creamery in there you know i got uh humble fog in there i got all sorts of funky blues uh and then we're going strawberries just straight strawberries keep it simple <laughs> We're going watermelon are these japanese strawberries are, are we importing these or are these uh no, no local fresh this okay. is i'm trying to get this like that's why i did the asparagus soup cody that's why like i'm trying to get some georgia some, strawberries not peaches. some local you know fresh ingredients uh spring <laughs> april here uh we're doing watermelon with smoked feta and basil and then i'm having the chef the patient chef at augusta national make me homemade dip and dots which is the ice cream of the future if you're not aware <laughs> literally, it's literally the ice cream of the future <laughs> and i think homemade dip and dots would be one of the most avant-garde things anybody could ever ever do and then we got some bangers on the wine front uh we've got a uh a jacolina which is actually similar to uh the white that uh mr rom served just a, a few days ago we're gonna do that in a rosé actually though and we're gonna go with an alex gumball uh pinot noir burgundy France is this is mushroomy forest forest floor. This is the wine that made me fall in love with wine. Uh, next up, we're doing a 2018 Caravan Petrol Etna Bianco. This thing, Randy, you would get such a kick out of this thing. <laughs> Petrol on the nose. It's got a little bit of skin contact, rim variation out the ass. Uh, we're going with a 1992 Oban Clamat Pinot Blanc from my guy, the late Jim Clendenin out in Santa Barbara. Uh, RIP. Uh, that's one of my favorite wines with oysters as well. Uh, then we're going to we're going Hold to the up. Canary Islands next. 2020 Envy Nate, uh, 2020 Envy Nate Benje Tinto. It's a Liston Prieto grape. This is the one that tastes like a charcuterie plate when you put it in your mouth. It is fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> my guys at uh, at uh, Envy Nate um uh, jose pastor selections bringing that into the country here next we're going with the, my birth year 1986 barolo uh one of the legendary producers uh on that one just you know gotta gotta have something to stand up to that beef tartare and lastly we are going with the eight years snow age june my daiginjo sake the hake san yukimoro <laughs> And I thought about going with the Winter Warrior on that one, but and then after that, we're getting into the Chateau it makes, Cam it makes sense. and the DRC. I think they've got like I think I think Augusta has a bottle of wine that was that was uh, Eisenhower's like first. See, you're gonna Orco. kill some of these past <laughs> uh, Randy, You have to pay for this. I know, I know. No, that's 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 why I didn't put a DRC on here. I tried to make it stuff that I a I've had and b it, it, it's not gonna bank much. Like it's not gonna bankrupt me, and it's approachable for some of the older cats. That was the word you didn't let me get there. That was the word I was gonna say. You took it out of my mouth. Just so, finally, someone does something approachable at this dinner. <laughs> God, hell yes, TC. <laughs> Vociferous hell yes for me on that. I'll, I'll come over for any time for that meal. That sounds phenomenal. Yeah. Oh my God. All right, catch my breath. Uh, what we, a we week, Deej. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we've kind of come to the end, guys. I think that's, mm. I think that's about it. Solly, I think maybe I've we get you one, out of here. Get I've you guys, one thing you guys, to leave you with. I'd like to <laughs> to nominate um, Scotty Scheffler to now be referred to him as the golfer. I think he's the golfer. Until like, someone I think he's, it. I think he's just the golfer. Like he's just that, that's that's all like there is. Daddy, you don't have to say the best golfer. Like yeah, he's the golf daddy. He's just the golfer. That with capital T, capital G, the golfer. Solly, big thing across social media. There's people coming up and then you know saying, "Oh yeah, yeah." There's there's a big thing happening tomorrow. How come Solly hasn't said anything about lottery? You see other people getting selected. What are you doing tomorrow, buddy? I, I finally got a bounce to go my way. I uh, finally caught a break in, in life, and uh, you know the ping pong balls bounced my way, and I I somehow won the lottery. Uh, quite the golf lottery, quite literally, and I, I do get the uh, tremendous opportunity to play Augusta National tomorrow. Wow. Um, very, uh, very excited about it. Got paired with Brendan Porath, um, and I'm very, very thrilled about that. We're gonna have quite a special day. Uh, very, very excited, very lucky, very blessed. Honestly, felt really guilty when my name when I saw my name up there. Of just like, no, there's no chance, first time that that was that was gonna happen, but uh, it did. 
And uh, yeah, had to go find a range the last couple of days to, to find a feel. I haven't touched the club since we left uh, St. Andrews. I am going to, my three consecutive rounds are going to be old course reversed, old course traditional, and then Augusta National. So I might just, this might be it. I might just retire after this one. But um, on, on behalf of a lot of listeners, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it's very fair. It's very fair. Honestly. Yeah, and probably KVV too. Right? Yeah. I, what KVV said? I, I swear, I got, I, I don't even care if nobody believes me. I swear to God, I was watching the board hoping to see KVV's name. I like, guess that's why when I when I saw mine, I was like, damn it. Like that, I was hoping for KVV. But I uh, say that every his... Powerball drawing, too. <laughs> Probably, I'm, just, I'm just glad you got all those reps down at uh, Golden Ocala. Uh, dude, that's going to help me on 12 <laughs> so much tomorrow. I have it's a feeling, the same so. thing. Um, no. How are you approaching it? <laughs> are you like, you know, Never got this far in my dreams. Just can't wait to soak it all up. Are you like, if I don't break 75, it's a failure? Uh, yeah, for sure. Just if I play bad, I'm going to have like the, if the first four hole goes holes go bad. I'm going to let it ruin the rest of my day. That's the, that's the main okay. way I'm approaching it. No, I, I just bring some big cans. Out. Are you going to hit cups? We'll hit cups. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry too much about what I shoot. I just want to like, just want to experience the shots, right? Um, I, I've gotten a lot of advice from a lot of people. Like, don't treat it like it's the only time you're ever going to play or else you're going to choke your ass off. Um, I'm just, you know, member T is going to be very different. I still don't really know what, how to, how to, you know, what, what shots to hit and where to be, where to be hitting it. But um, I'm just going to go soak it up and have fun. It's, I hold uh, this tournament and in in, in this, in this course with a lot of reverence. And uh, this is going to mean, obviously mean a ton to me. So I'm really, really, really excited about it. And I'm sure we'll, Sure, we'll have a pot about it afterwards, and everyone can hear all about it. But a lot of people that have gotten to do it uh, in the media lottery have, have said nothing but amazing things about it. And feel feel very blessed uh, to to have been here this past week, and to, to have this happen was was just pretty surreal. So I'm very excited. I bet that, you play really well, honestly. Yeah. For sure, I think you're going to go out there. You're, you're the comfiest of comfiest pairings, like you and BP out there just having a stroll. Unless a third person, I don't know, you didn't say. <laughs> if it's that lady, lady. Oh, I hope it's no, the German it's first round of golf ever. Yeah. It's not. I, that would be and Brett are the other two uh, guys that we're going to be we're going to be playing with. But uh, yeah, going to miss a couple meetings tomorrow. I do apologize for that one, guys. Um, also, I love my, I love you so much, honey. It is her birthday tomorrow, and uh, I did I did warn her that this potentially could happen. Didn't think it actually would. Uh, so daddy will be getting bringing home a, a nice birthday present for mommy and stuff. I need to go uh, hit that Walmart. Walmart. Hit yeah. that Walmart. See if they got any flowers <laughs> yeah. left. Uh, well, have fun, dude. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah. Thank we you. Got a, we got a couple other quick housekeeping things. Taurus sauce is back this week. We thought that would be a good master's hangover cure for everybody. So look for that Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We are going back to Australia. Uh, the trailer is up on our YouTube channel. People seem to be really digging it. It's a very fun season. I can't uh, wait for everybody to see it. Uh, we've got the first LPGA major of the year that coming up this week, Randall. You gotta, I'm sure we'll have some collateral around that. Yeah, for sure. We'll we'll have a preview podcast out uh, late Wednesday into Thursday. And then uh, live show Friday at the conclusion of play. Live show Sunday. But I also want to shout out TC and Cody are going to be on ESPN+. Plus. So find they're, they're going to announce the official details, I believe, tomorrow. But be sure to tune in. Uh, you can hear a couple of our boys calling some golf. That's uh, that. yeah. We've got that. Cody. We've got the booth is back this week on the trap draw feed. We have a whole other podcast. If you're just discovering this podcast for the first time, we have a whole other pod. If you love this golf podcast, <laughs> we have a whole other podcast that doesn't talk about golf at all. Uh, it's called the trap draw. Uh, you can seek that one out. It's usually different from episode to episode. Sometimes it's baseball. Sometimes it's movies. Sometimes it's grocery stores. Uh, this time it's going to be uh, Neil and Cody chopping it up in what we call the booth. That will be going up uh, this week, I believe. And yep. TC, the pro shop is loaded. Is that pro correct? shop is loaded? It's chock full. We got all the all the hits in there. We got a bunch of foot choice stuff launching this week. We got rowback. We got our H and B spring collection. We got some new golf tees and some new colors from the twisted mind of Casey and TC there. Uh, and then I would also direct people too to the the uh, Taurus Sauce uh, podcast that'll be dropping this week as well. That's it right. is a busy podcast week. We got Tour of Sauce podcast coming out on Tuesday. On Wednesday, this show, we're back. Another happy, happy hour. hour. Jeez. <laughs> RBC, we got the hangover show. <laughs> RBC Heritage happy hour. We're going to be here previewing that, previewing the Chevron. Big mention, we're going to be live on Friday. TC, myself, Jordan, probably try to get some guests in there too because the big guy has bailed on us and is going to Mexico on vacation. <laughs> 
And then point. Sunday, a week from today, we're right back here live again. RBC Chevron recap. Love it. Boys, you're, on you mute, you're on mute, Pie Man. Uh, it was the only time I did that all week. All week. And I was just trying to say what a great week it was. Thank you so much uh, to everybody who listened. Thank you to all of you guys. Thanks to KVV for popping in. Smash Thanks it. For, for Jordan for hanging out. Thanks to Cody. Thanks to Tron, Randy, Neil, Johnson, Wagner came by. All of you guys for listening. This was the best. It was my, one of my favorite weeks of, of Masters coverage we've Legion ever done. 13. Yeah, we've got <laughs> just... And, uh, Thank you to everybody. And thanks to you, Deej, for, for sitting in the hosting chair and, and running the ones and twos and, and uh, Cody running the ones and twos, but running the, uh, you know, running the host chair. This was, this was a, a treat for me to get to experience in person and couldn't have been possible without, uh, without you taking over the hosting duties. And a Absolutely. lot of people, a lot of people asking for a hamster dam. We're going to give CBS a break this week. It felt like a little bit of a reversion into bad habits, but we got them again for Harbor town. And if we need to, Put them on blast. We'll put them on blast, or hopefully we're we're praising progress there. Uh, come this time next week. Like, don't do that. That's that was good. this was TC. This is my favorite tweet as all week. This is TC's alternate champions menu here. I think <laughs> if that's that's one for the YouTube people only. It's not going to make any sense on the podcast. I'm sorry. Uh, long week, guys. Solid. Go get some sleep, everybody else. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we will catch you guys next big time. Can, big can, big can, big can. Big can. Big can.